Don't mind me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tone Talk with Mark Uzanski and Dave Friedman. Dave, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Yeah? Water today on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm drinking right now in my little red cup. We are excited to... Uh, uh, <laughs> Brian, thank Brian. you for uh, this is sober joining show. the show. Sure. This is the Sober Show, exactly. We are a clean show today. And Brian, welcome to the non-alcoholic show today. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Wampler of Wampler Pedals and Amps. Brian Thanks for uh, for joining us. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, this was this is great. You know, we, we're going a little an hour earlier than we normally do, so um, I'm sure we'll catch some people watching us a little bit earlier than normally. But you know, thanks for joining us. And um, Dave, what's going on with you? Dave, what's going on with you? Ready for Sweetwater? Yeah. Sweetwater Gear Fest yeah. next week. That's cool. Actually, I'm leaving Monday, so. Um, Are you going to that brush around today, trying to ship? Yeah, it's like, it's like two hours away from me, so it's a pretty pretty quick drive for me. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, Dave, it's really hot and muggy, so bring your speedo. It's gonna rain. No shirt, no shoes. It's going to be hot like a mug. Yeah, yeah, it probably <laughs> will rain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it probably will rain. So, no, it, it's supposed to. Hey, you know what? We're getting a little bit of an echo, guys. <laughs> I hear the echo. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure why. Yeah, not me either. Not, Dave, do I'm you have really a, anything an on? Through sp nope. I am. Um, Same as usual. Strange. I'm okay. not hearing an echo. Okay. Well, it seems to be better now. We'll deal with it. <laughs> So it's Brian, a, it's yeah, it's an analog, it's an analog echo type of thing. It prob probably bucket brigade if I had to. You know, <laughs> it down. So. I wish I could adjust it. Um, <laughs> thanks for for joining, and because today's a really exciting day for you. It is, yeah. We just released the ethereal delay and reverb, which is uh, you know like an ambient type of thing. So if you like delays and reverbs, then you probably dig it. I've heard it's. I mean, I've seen all the, a bunch of the different videos. A bunch of the different. Yeah, videos. we did a bunch of different videos this week. Like, <laughs> we had Pete Thorne. We had who else? Uh, of course, Brett Kingman. We had uh, Matthias. Um, what's his last name? Uh, I know you know what I'm talking about Matthias. Uh, uh, Matthias Sadio or something. Yeah, Matthias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mateus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then who else did we have? We had uh, Robert Baker's coming out tomorrow. I don't know if any of Robert Baker's, but um, he's got a cool video channel too. So this basically, we've done like a video every day with a bunch of different guys. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's fun. Awesome. Hey, you know what, guys? guys we, people are hearing the echo. People are hearing the echo. Which is very strange. They are? Yeah. They just mentioned in the chat. So I wonder. So I wonder. Brian, do you are do you are you getting any Brian, sound coming out of your speakers at all? Sound coming out of your speakers at all? No. Uh -uh. No. Uh -uh. Hmm. In fact, let me. Nor am I. It could be me. Could be me. Well, let's see. Can you guys hear me? All right. Yeah, Adam says there's no echo on, on his end. Adam E B H. Okay. Okay. I hear it. <laughs> I, can, I can hear it. I'm just ignoring it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a bit a bit annoying. Um, it's a bit a bit annoying. Uh, hmm. Ryan. Yes. Do you hear any yeah. sound that's coming out of speakers at all? No. Nope. Okay. Dave, are you? Just my earbuds and they're way down. All right, you know what? I think it's gone. It kind of floats in and out. You know, kind of like a bad girlfriend. Kind of like a bad girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, well, let's just keep moving along. So tell us more about the ethereal pedal. Okay, so it's uh, unfortunately, I, I made a bad mistake. Unfortunately, I, I made a bad People don't want to do 
whenever yeah, the releasing yeah, of the pedals. And that mistake was to show it before it was and ready about a year ago. Damn. Year so ago. we showed it, so and I wasn't exactly 100% happy with happy it. With and so we refined it. We spent, of course, a ton of time just going over like any sort of little bit of a noise issue. And there was a couple different things that I really wanted to do a little better. So uh, we just really refined it and got it ready for release. And now it's out. Finally. <laughs> But it's, you know, it's, it's the type of thing, it's, it's, it's really perfect, like, if you're, if you're a really praise and worship perfect. guy, it's really perfect for that sort of thing. If um, uh, you're just, like, really into more ambient type of stuff, mm -hmm. then it's, it's really cool for that as well. But there's also a setting on it that if you're just a straight-ahead quarter note delay, a little bit of reverb, it does that as well. So, multi-versatile. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it yeah, do a yeah, bunch of different things. So it can go a from, bunch of different things. So from, you know, very light to very light all the way to, to supersonic. Supersonic. Yep. All right. So I'm. I got to say the the delay is super killing me. Yeah, um, it's rough. It's rough. So maybe Brian, if you could do me a favor, mm -hmm. is just um, drop off. Yep. And join us yep. back. And you know, come back, back in again. Sure. Come back in again. Yep. And Dave, sure. if you can do the same thing. Dave, if you can do the same thing. Mm. Okay. Yep. All right. And we'll see if that works. And I'll keep everybody enter entertained. <laughs> so while while we were talking before, while these guys are are um, uh, going to rejoin, I saw something in the the new Van Halen book that just came out called um, "Running with the Devil." I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but um, there's a logo in here for Jimi Hendrix. And if you check this out, this logo right here sure looks like Van Halen to me. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, if you guys check that out, Brian. Yes. That's a hell of a lot better. <laughs> that is much better. It sounded like I had an ethereal playing behind my voice. Everyone's yeah. voice actually. So yeah. It was quite in ambient in a bad way yeah it wasn't very good it wasn't good <laughs> i was getting nervous there um but i figured that might solve it so now we just need to have dave rejoin and we'll be in we'll be in good shape but while we're waiting for dave um he said i'll beat right there i restarted my computer okay wow. so i'll text him back and tell him that's cool and so you know i i think it would be great um Take us back to the story of you said you released it about a year early. So yeah. I'm yeah, curious. So, 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 you know, prior to that, we've kind of been known like as like the dirt box company. Like we have always have a lot of distortions and that sort of thing, a lot of analog type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I really kind of wanted to move in, kind of grow up. I wanted to kind of mature a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so we started looking more into some DSP and kind of learning more DSP type stuff. And uh, really just, you know, that, that's something that you're not like going to go to college for. That's something that you just have to dig in, figure it out, learn it, mm -hmm. make your mistakes, and, and just that's, that's kind of how you learn it. So, you know, that, this has been several years ago we actually started that process. So um, the ethereal and uh, one that's called the reflection that's not out yet. It's, it's a reverb that's coming out shortly. But um, th those were like our first two DS our main DSP uh, base effects. So like, and I say DSP, even though there is a, the analog chant that your guitar, uh, your guitar stays analog, but the effect is in digital, right? So, right. Um, so a lot of people get confused cause you know, you don't want a lot of, you don't, I don't like a lot of analog to digital conversion and back and forth. So, uh, especially when going through a bunch of different pedals that do that. So, uh, but anyways, so we started that process and, um, you know, I, I thought that, I thought it was going to be something that we could fi Hello. fix Dave. these problems. And uh, hey, Dave. And uh, we had some noise problems, and uh, that I didn't have the tone control just right. It just wasn't exactly to my liking. So um, I, we kind of tore it all apart as much as you can tear words on the screen apart. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, and really kind of, we kind of had to break it to fix it. And I know that sounds really weird, but we kind of had to get rid of a bunch of the of the coating and then kind of start from fresh and it became a heck of a lot better hmm. 
Wow. So, wow. So, um, and it was how long of a process has this taken of, to develop the pedal? Uh, total, I would probably say two years for, for that pedal. Yeah. Wow. And um, did you work on it only yourself? Did you come up with it or was it with other people? Yeah. Or? No. So, I have an engineer that works with me uh, named Jake Steffes. Uh, he's like, if you watch the YouTube video that I put out, He's the engineer guy that's sitting on a couch drinking a big ass thing of Nestle Quick. So, <laughs> <laughs> so right. we tend to be we tend to be a bunch of goofballs here. That's but, cool. I, I like Nestle uh, Quick. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so he and I, it's just uh, we work together every day, virtually because he doesn't live near me now. Uh, used to, but he doesn't now. But anyway, so we just work together and uh, bang out a bunch of different designs, have fun. And, talk about stupid stuff and look at stupid memes on the internet and all that fun stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. The time, the, the time wasting of memes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Have you actually made memes? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I've, I've, yeah, yeah. I've done that as well. All I've right. actually Both made of you guys few. have too much time on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, see, I have like a, a social media team, like but basically it's a couple guys that, that's kind of their job is like, go find cool stuff to post or make right. it, you know? So me personally, that's, that's probably, my wife's job. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Your wife does that. Yeah. 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 So, so she feels your pain. She's the one making your, your memes and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I'm more like, wait, Oh, that was posted on our, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Was it ready? It was ready. Right. <laughs> Hey, the the uh, the echo is gone. The ethereal echo is gone. It's now gone to all the stores where they can actually buy it. Um, of which I wanted to give a plug to the Guitar Guru Network um, and Keith Bears yep. over there. You guys can uh, buy the pedal, the ethereal pedal. Am I pronouncing that right? By the ethereal? way, Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I thought so. Unless you're a hillbilly from Indiana like me, I, at first I kept calling it ethereal. <laughs> and, yeah, I barely graduated high school. And so they're like, dude, dude, you sound stupid. It's ethereal. And I'm like, I don't even know what the damn word means. <laughs> someone someone did that. Someone did that to me too. Someone was saying it wrong. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I good luck with it. I, I hear it's a great pedal and um It's all right. It's all right. It, it's all right. You know, and we got some I see some people behind you. Um you know, oh, yeah. uh, Brad Paisley, oh, you got some. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's up there. Brad, Brent Mason, and then the thing of old pedals. Oh, yeah, Brent Mason, great, another great player. Both those guys are killer. So how, do you, how long do you guys go back, Dave and Brian? Do you guys know each other for a while? Not that long. Just, uh, what, since the uh, affiliation with uh, Boutique? Well, Dave and I were high school sweethearts. <laughs> and so I don't, a lot of people don't know this, but you know, he had a crush on me and you know, I, I, I was in a relationship at the time. No. Yes. Yeah, so, so we both, we're both partners with uh, boutique amp distribution, which basically means that like, it, it's different for everyone. For me, it means that they make our pedals in California and they handle like shipping it out to the retailers. Right. Um, Same so, with me. Oh, okay. So yeah. So like everybody's, it's kind of a different yeah. situation with everybody, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, so now we're it's kind of like we're stepbrothers, you know. Dave, there you go. Dave gives me like the noogies and stuff at shows. <laughs> hey, leave me alone, man. You get the wedgies. Yeah, he gives me the wedgies. Yeah. <laughs> now I just hand the beer to him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We'll have to be doing that at, at Summer Nam. Oh, you're I'm in with, trouble, Mark. Like I said. I know. I know. I'm. I'm just bringing my depends. <laughs> <laughs> We actually thought one year, uh, one of the it was, it was an amp show, the Nashville Amp Show. Uh, we thought about I don't know if you ever been to an amp show or not, but I have. Dave has. Yeah. So it's yeah. basically yeah. you rent out this big hotel, and every company has like a hotel room, okay? And uh, all the doors are open, and it sounds like the worst guitar center you've ever been in because everybody's playing something different, and you know. 3,000 rooms. But no, anyways, volume, no volume restrictions. <laughs> with no volume restrictions, right. So, um, so yeah, we thought about actually uh, renting, or not renting, buying a keg just for the room, thinking this would be cool because everybody would come to our room. And the more I thought about it, I thought, I'm going to have a bunch of drunk people like spilling beer all over my pedals and vomiting <laughs> on them. And I'm like, this, uh, 
That's probably not a great idea. You know, we've thought about this many times also, yes. <laughs> you, know, you know what? At the AMP shows, we used to do – we actually – it actually doesn't work out that bad. We, we used to uh, bring beer to the AMP show, and we would fill the tub with ice. No, we do and that. We, we just throw throw it all in there, <laughs> and then like people that we not everyone, but most of the people we know. Hey, there's beer in the bathroom. Go, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. But I've often thought at Nam about having the keg idea. <laughs> well, you know, we got that sound room. We got that huge sound room. We oh, could put true. in. We could tuck it in the corner there, and like no one would be the wiser. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because otherwise you have to wait in the line and go find one. Oh, my God, yeah. There's, I mean, the amount of money, it, it would, you know, you could have five kegs from the amount of money you spend on during the am. Yeah, $8, <laughs> beer, $8 Budweiser's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And we could pick a good beer, actually. <laughs> That's true. Well, we might you may have to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, Although, in, instead, instead of, um, you know, being too loud, just be... They'll be getting violations for being too drunk. <laughs> well, I don't I, think that I, would notice. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's possible at Nam. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Have you seen people walking around now? Come on, that's come true. on true. now. <laughs> right. No, I don't so, think that's possible. So Brian, um, I, I, I'm really interested in knowing, you know, how everything came about for you, uh, you know, with your company, and if you can kind of take us back through the history of, of, you know. You being a musician, how you became a musician, and how you got into building pedals and stuff. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, well, yeah, me too. I mean, I, it's it's kind of a longish story. I can I can I can make a five minute version, or I can make a forty five minute version. Give us give us the, the it give doesn't us the seem to matter on this show. Yeah, <laughs> so take your time. Okay. So imagine I'm seven seven year old Brian. So I'm like three foot tall and about fifteen pounds, and. <laughs> My brother played in a band. Uh, they were playing downstairs at our house, and they are oddly enough, playing Night Ranger, Don't Tell Me You Love Me. The guitar player had a flying V. Uh. And so seven-year-old Brian thought that was, like, the coolest thing ever. So that, at that point, that's kind of what made me start liking guitar at seven years old. So I talked my parents into buying me a guitar for Christmas. And uh, so I, I tried I basically, you know, that like I'm 42 ish years old or something like that. So, um, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like listening to the radio trying to play stuff. And I did take some lessons for a while and they taught, I learned Yankee Doodle, you know, which is comes in handy when you're playing bar gigs. <laughs> and um, so that, yeah, lessons didn't last very long. But anyway, so, so I, I, um, just you know, when I was high school, I played with some bands, just jamming out in people's garages and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got in my twenties, I started playing like some colleges and stuff like that. Bar, of course, bars and uh, played in church a little bit later than that. Uh, but when, when I was about twenty-two or three or so, I got into my first country band. And um, at, at then at that time, like I was a, before that, I was like a huge George Lynch fan. Like I lo loved George Lynch and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so like my style wasn't country at all, but I had to learn all these country songs. <laughs> so, so I was, you know, they'd bring me like these, like, here's an Alan Jackson song. And I'm like, how in the hell am I supposed to play that? Like, <laughs> I don't even know what that guy's doing. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I was like, Who is this guy? And I found out it was Brent Mason. Uh, and so I started studying all of Brent stuff and, uh, really just learning how to, totally change and morph my style to fit in with this band to make some money and uh, I kind of fell in love with that so um, and I went through a couple of different bands through my 20s and uh, I was working like I had construction jobs before that like I said I barely graduated high school didn't go to college uh, got married when I was 19 for mm. almost two it almost lasted two years even yeah, so long-term marriage there. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, she found love with her Walmart manager. So, you know, that's oh. the way it goes. Right? You know, <laughs> it, so it sounds like things worked out for you, though. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, so I got I got more into playing with bands, and um, so it was also like I was playing. I'd play in a bar on Saturday night, and then go to church on Sunday and play in a praise and worship band. I was going down to Nashville. I had some friends that lived in Nashville. 
Um, it was nice playing on Broadway with them. And so I was like doing a lot of driving. And in the meantime, I was also trying to like work like a remodeling job. So I was working for myself as a subcontractor, trying to work remodeling around it. And uh, in what spare time I had, I was like, I'd have like old pedals and I would just like, wonder what happens when I replace cap capacitors. And so that's really how I started. It's like, well, let me pull out this capacitor and put a bigger one in. Let's see what it does. <laughs> and um, and like, starts. yeah, that was, it was just fun. That's how it and all starts. It, yeah, absolutely. And, and I wrote, I, I read some books and started learning more. Oh, so that's an inv non-inverting op amp. And you know, that's, that's why that capacitor gives it more bass or more gain or whatever. Um, so, you know, it's kind of learning along the way. And so for a while, I actually did mods and kind of got more into that DIY scene. Uh, wrote a couple of books on like modifying different pedals and that sort of thing. And at, uh, and so there came a point where people people were asking me to build them pedals, like custom pedals. Mm -hmm. And I was also selling a lot of books, and they were kind of, they were pretty fifty fifty equal. So I'm like, I can't do both. They're both growing. I got to choose a direction. And it was. Um, Oh, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was a retailer in Canada who basically, he just called me up and he's like, dude, look, just make, just make like three or four pedals. Like you need an overdrive, a distortion, and you know, maybe a compressor or something. You need a line. I'll put it in my store. You know, I'll pay you a little bit less so I can make a profit. You can make a profit. So he basically told me, here's how the music, here's how the MI business works. <laughs> you know, you you make stuff, you sell it to us for this price, we sell it to them at that price, and everybody gets a margin, and that's how the business works. That's how business works, you know? So, um, mm. so that's really where uh, it started, because I, I get, sold some to him, and he sold them and asked me for more, and other retailers said, hey, can you sell some to us as well? So I'm like, I think maybe actually making the pedals is what's gonna be my thing. So and at first I was working in a, in a garage, I was working in a, like a tw 12 by 12 room in my garage, uh, you know, sought, trying to solder everything, I'm sleeping an hour and a half a night for a couple years. And, um, it, it, you know, it just got to the point where I figured out I suck really bad at building pedals. Like I suck. I'm just, it's not my forte. I love designing them. Um, and I love talking to the in the in customers about pedals and about gear and about tone and about all that stuff. But to actually sit down and solder, you know, five thousand pedals a month, like the same five thousand pedals a month, it bored me absolutely senseless. senseless. Right. So, um, so I did. I just found, uh, you know, I got hooked up with a company in in Kentucky that uh, made speakers, and they said, well, we you know we can build pedals too. So I said, okay. So we got together. We formed a plan on how, how they're going to be built, what parts were going to be used, like all that stuff. And so they started building them for me. <laughs> and, uh, and so that was, you know, now we're talking 2007-ish or so, 2008-ish or so. And, um, you know, it just kept growing and growing. So I, got, I was able to focus more on what I like doing and what I'm better at and let them handle, like, we need to buy 10,000 more JFETs because we're going to run out in three months. You know, so that's just like that kind of stuff is not my strong suit at all. Right. What were some of the first pedals that you came out with? The very, well, there's some that I came out with that are long gone. Uh, there was, I'm trying to think what, what the names of them even were. I think Dave's um, got one. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the one that he has was a prototype of some sort that I don't even know why we put a different enclosure on it but for some reason we printed up a Black Friday enclosure you probably have to ask Avi on that one I don't know yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we had like a talent booster um, <laughs> which, yeah, which is it was just a boost and the reason why I call it that is because I came out with the ego compressor and that started doing really well and I thought, oh, well, we got an ego compressor. How about a talent booster? It, it tanked. It did terrible. But it was actually a pretty, it was, it was basically like an EP booster. So it was just a JFET based booster. Um, but it sounded pretty cool. Uh, we came out with the Pinnacles, came out with a lot of, some of the stuff I have now, I came out in that, in that era, like the Euphoria mm -hmm. was derived from that. Um, of course, the ego was derived from that. It's changed a little bit since then. Uh, what else did I have? 
Pinnacle, the first Pinnacle. First Pinnacle came out from that from that at that era. A buddy um, of mine sent me a picture. He posted a picture on Facebook to me uh, the other day um, uh, of an old Pinnacle. It didn't have the logo on it. Didn't have hardly any silk screening or you know or any right stuff on it. it was it yeah, we used to, old. we we used to just put stickers on them. Yeah, that's what it had. Yep. So at that and at that time in the pedal bit, like in in the boutique quote unquote boutique world, like that was completely acceptable to just have a sticker. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's all completely changed now. You'd probably get laughed away if you tried to <laughs> sell right. those to a store now. But, um, but yeah, I mean that's 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 kind of where everything started from. It's just is those pedals and just building up from there. That's great. That's great. But, but you know, I started out doing a lot of that stuff because I was broke. And uh, like I, I wanted sounds of different amps, and so I was trying to like make circuits that could get that sort of sound to like a deluxe reverb, or mm -hmm. at least close enough for me to go play a gig, you know. So that way we could switch back and forth between Skinner and Brown Eyed Girl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, it was just so you can go ahead and it could work for you, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really. I mean, everything kind of starts from what do I want to use on my board? <laughs> a lot, really, that's where a lot of stuff comes from. It's just stuff that I would like to have on my board or uh, someone that I, you know, a close friend or something says, man, I wish that I could get a tube screamer that sounded just like my great 808, but had more EQ options. So we came out with the Clarksdale, you know, uh, it's kind of the same thing with the velvet fuzz. He was looking for a specific fuzz that sounded more Eric Johnson-y. And uh, so he brought his rig over and I breadboarded it, and I, he told me what he wanted, and I got it. I got it really close within about an hour or two, which is pretty odd for breadboarding. And wow. so that that ended up becoming the Velvet Fuzz after some refinements. But yeah, so that's that's, cool. that's kind of how things happen. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So I mean, Dave, you you kind of had, I guess, the same thing when you got into building amps, right? Well, you just kinda... Same idea about amps. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I was. I'm different. I'm not as much of a pedal guy. Um, so, but I, you know, I wanted to build what was in my head as far as the amp goes, you know, and the sounds that, that I wanted to hear. Um, so it was the same idea, same exact idea, just, just the, the, the tube part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never, I never really use much. I mean, I, an occasional booster or uh, octaves or choruses or de delays and stuff. Yes, I, I always use that stuff, but um but not not too much in the drive world, just you know, other than boosting like a Marshall a little bit or something. Yeah, I, I always had a dirty amp that needed boosting a little bit, maybe. So I, I would live more in the booster and or um, you know, tube screamer esque boosting, you know, with gain kind of low kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I played with a bunch of different pedals. I've always, I mean, I, I had two screamers early in the day. I even had boss pedals. Did did you do a lot of mods on uh, boss pedals? Just out of curiosity, uh, Brian. Oh me? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tons and tons and tons and tons. In fact, well, you it, wrote a book. <laughs> I wrote a book about yeah. I mean, there's yeah. like sixty five different pedals in there that tell you you know if you want more bass, change this capacitor. If you want more gain, change this resistor. And it's like. It's super dumbed down for like the, the guitar player, right? Who like mm. the last thing he wants to see is a bunch of math saying, well, technically they don't want that. They're just like, okay, just tell me what parts to, to Yeah, release. right. Just change yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, it was really kind of aimed towards like the gigging guy that, you know, grab you a, a couple bucks worth of parts and you can change your DS1 to something that you can use, you know? So, mm. uh, but yeah. yeah, I mean, even now, like sometimes if I just for fun, it's actually, <laughs> this is that much of a, stupid nerd I am it's actually fun for me to just take a boss pedal or something and just modify it so you know, like a couple of YouTube videos I did I turn a metal zone into an EQ pedal <laughs> and, <laughs> turn one into an overdrive and I like to put them on my pedal board to just take them to gigs people are like you're using a metal zone I'm like yeah dude yeah, <laughs> in fact, I got two of them, man. And I'll tell them it's a, it's an overdrive and an I use them together. Yeah, use them together. <laughs> now you just have to show up with a full board of metal zones, but they're. I'm, I'm working towards it. I'm working towards it. <laughs>
That's awesome. <laughs> or you can even go back further and go the heavy metal pedal, which is, I think, the predecessor to the metal zone, right? Yeah, the HM2, yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that from when I was a kid. I was like, oh, look at this. Those things are worth money now. I'd yeah, be afraid to tear one. Up. At one time, I mean, you could buy one for like 15 bucks. I think now they're like 150 bucks on eBay. So, yeah. well, yeah. and then all the other boss pedals that were discontinued over time, mm -hmm. that, you know, became, you know, like the vibrato pedal, huge money. And, uh, yeah. you know, and then now they've reissued it under the Wazacraft stuff. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is that DSP based, though? Does the Wazacraft? No. Oh, okay. No, no. It wasn't a... No, it's analog. Uh, and they, they did cool things when they reissued them with the, the Waza stuff, you know, like yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. they add, add like a little switch, a little feature or something that's right. a little different. Good stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah, they did some good stuff too. But I, I love your line of pedals, Brian. I've, I've seen your stuff. And so how did you start getting hooked up with like some of the different, um, different artists and stuff like that? It would... Uh, you know, it's all over the place with, with Brad Paisley. Uh, I went to a concert and I threw a pedal on stage. <laughs> True story. That's great. Uh, I threw a pedal at him. Had my name, my uh, business card on the bottom of it. And That's uh, fantastic. Zach Childs was his tech at the time. Now Zach works for True Tone and does a True Tone Lounge on YouTube. And uh, I saw, saw that Zach was on the Telecaster discussion forum. And so I just sent him a message. I'm like, hey, I'm the guy that tried to hit Brad with the pedal last, last weekend. <laughs> like, is there any chance he could try it out? And they, he kind of got a kick out of it. And uh, yeah, so th that kind of started that relationship where, you know, now I'm the guy that tried to clock Brad in the head with a pedal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story, though. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, it's, funny. it's funny. I think the first time I heard Brian's pedals was in, in Brad Paisley's rig that I built for him once. Oh, cool. Yeah. And the, the ego compressor, I remember distinctly. And, uh, and it wasn't there an overdrive, too, or something, the pa Paisley? Paisley something. Drive, yeah. Paisley Drive, yeah. Yep. I remember those specifically from that rig I built. Mm -hmm. His tech at the time was, um, his name is escaping me. You probably know. Yeah, I can see. Uh, for, for a long time, he was his tech. Um, oh, what, now you got me thinking. Um, What's his younger not, younger was, guy. It was after Zach. Oh, what is his name? Um not Randall. That's his still no. clear. No. Holy cow! I must have. I must not have. I, I'm having a mental block too. It's like we've been friends sort of ever since, but I can't think of him right now. Chad. Chad. <laughs> Chad. Chad yeah. There we go. Yeah. 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 I think he's working. Or last time. Chad Weaver. Working, Chad Weaver. Mm -hmm. I think he's working like Taylor Swift or somebody like that now. Was he or, working? He was. Uh, might have been working for Zach Brown for a while too. Was he? I think so. Maybe. Yeah. A lot of those texts kind of move here and there. To, yeah. Depending on what's going on, but Is well, in, Nash in Nashville, texts don't make much money. Yeah, I don't, yeah, because they're paid for the gig days, not the travel. Right. Yep. Oh, Which is crazy. not good for a tech. <laughs> nah, you gotta love it, man. You gotta yeah. want to eat, breathe, sleep it, and not have a family. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be young. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. Not like, young and no bills. <laughs> right. Exactly. Hey, you know what? We should probably jump into the chat. Say hi to some folks. Sure. Um, I noticed that we actually already have a question that came out, so we, we can jump. Um, Nathan Napier wants to know, what's next on the Wampler camp? What's oh. what's next for Wampler camp now that the Ethereal is out? I know, Nathan. I, I can't tell you, Nathan. If I tell you now, then everybody will know because you'll tell everybody on Facebook, right? <laughs> I, know, I know you. I know what you do. It's fine. So I would tell you this. It's not an overdrive. It's not a compressor. And it's not a distortion or a fuzz. But that's it. That, that's all you get for the next two months. And then in two and a half months, you'll know. My guess okay. is it's got to be a chorus. Uh, that's close. That, that's, you're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, so I'll just jump in and say, some, say hi to a bunch sure. of people. Uh, we've got about 30 people watching, 33 people watching right now. Um, Michael Bishop says hi. Uh, Adam hey, EBH. Uh, T Bone. What's going on, T Bone? Um, Garrett Story. He says my two favorite pedals, the B E O D and the Tumnus. Tumnus. Mm -hmm. I got to. I got to learn to say that. Stacking Tum those together sound really good too. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I've heard a lot of really great things about it. So that's basically a clean boost, the Tumnus? It's, it's basically like, the, you've heard of the Klon, right? Right. So it's basically all the sonic goodness of the Klon in the size of half of a Snickers bar. You know, so it's a little micro pedal. The, the Tumnus is great. Yeah, I've, I've heard great things about it. Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, that's one I want. I, I know I know a guy that makes those. So I can hook you up. I yeah I know I, I, I yeah I know, I know a guy too. That I, well, the other guy that helped with making these that was supposed to but hasn't. Uh, that guy needs to be fired. Can't have that. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I've, it, at one point, was it a bigger pedal, the Tumnus? And then you made no, it smaller footprint. It's, it's always been small. Yeah. It's always been small. Okay. Mm -hmm. Super yeah, because I'm I'm not real big on like doing like exact clones. I really don't. I just I'm not into that. Um, I will if like a huge amount of people ask me to, but I really like I like making something either different or better. Uh, you know, if I'm doing like something based on something else. So like, you know, with the Clark still, it's a it's an 808 with an active bass and an active mid control. Mm -hmm. um, the Tumnus, like, uh, and we are coming out with the Tumnus Deluxe, which is super cool. But um, wait, well, what's different about that? Oh, I can't. I, I can't. You can't say. You can't say. I you can't divulge that information. With, you told that you're coming out with the <laughs> Deluxe, but you know. there will there will be one of those in the future because I'm staring at the prototype right now. And mm. ah, maybe that's the Black Friday here. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Uh, but uh, I forgot where I was going with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, um. Oh man, what were you saying? Oh, I lost it. <laughs> I lost it also. Um, well, anyway, so you're, so the the Tumnus Deluxe. You know what? You know what? Oh, we were yeah. talking about the Klon and everything. Oh, like yeah, that. oh yeah, yeah. I was talking about circuits. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so sure. the, so the Tumnus is basically a, um, you know, the Klon style circuit and a small pedal factor. And I at the time I didn't see really anybody doing that, at least at a, at a large scale. And I thought, you know, people want the circuit. They they don't want to pay five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars for it. Um, let's make it better by making it smaller, making it fit on, you know, in a small space on a pedal board. Yeah, it sounds great. I mean, I, I've heard so much, you know, all this mythology about the clom pedal and it's all gooped over and you can't see the, the, the actual board and what, what it is. I mean, did you ever rip one apart to look at it or, I mean, I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, it's, you know, a lot of people think that the goop stopped someone from reverse engineering. It actually does, and if anything, it, it makes you think, ah, challenge. Challenge <laughs> accepted. <laughs> you can get that stuff off if you know how to do it. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Right. And, um, but, you know, now, I mean, shoot, there's, there's a, you can Google for clone schematic, and there's, you can find a clone schematic in about half a second, you know. Right. So basically any pedal seems like once it comes out on the market, somebody reverse engineers it and posts the schematic, but. Uh, you know, it's the way is it is. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. I mean, these are really old technology, you know, so. And there's no way to patent it or, you know. Yeah. No, because it's like patenting a spoon. I mean, like a transistor is going to work the way a transistor works. Uh, you're not doing anything unique with that. Now, now I mean, you can tra you trademark it so, like, no one else can use the name, you know, Eagle Compressor or whatever. Right. Uh, or no tumness. one else can use Or Tumnus or anything like that. But as far as like patenting that circuitry, not not with not with something as simple like it'd be like it'd be like patenting a Marshall circuit, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just yeah, it's just not you know. mm -mm. right. It just yeah. is what it is. That's interesting. And you sorry, take all that, my, all that? my allergies are nuts right now. I'm sorry, guys, but that's okay. In, in Indiana, it's like peak allergy season, so my eyes are like watering like crazy. Yeah, my, I can't wait. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. That's coming. <laughs> every time I go back every year, it's like, yeah, my eyes just start. My I get eye allergies really bad, so my eyes just start. Right. And there's nothing that works. There's nothing, nothing that, that takes it away. Drops no. help a little bit, but not really, and this and that. And yeah, you, I, the I best thing people, you do is rinse your eyes out all the time. Yeah. Like, that I works better people, than I basically have a cold. For, it's like I'm having a cold for three months a year. <laughs> wow. That's tough. You can't, like, I guess you can't t get like allergy shots or all that stuff. It's too much. You know what? I, I don't know if an allergy shot would work. I actually asked my wife about that this morning. Um, where I may try doing an allergy shot this year. Usually I just kind of man up, stop being a little wuss, 
<laughs> but um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty bad this year. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes you got to do it. Um, so let's. I'm going to jump back into the chat. Sure. At, one, at one point, there was a lot of people saying there's a lot of bad echo, um, and then someone said it's, it's gone. So yeah. we're we're all good. And then then they said we're back. So um, let's see. Uh, Michael Bishop says I bought three of Brian's pedals back in March. Cool. Uh, thank you. And then uh, T Bone says I've got one coming. Um, and then someone asked me for just to, to sing while you guys were gone. Um, <laughs> uh, Adam EVH wants to know, how are you liking the Variac, Mark? Oh, I, I recently got a Variac for, um, for a Marshall. I've, I've been trying that out. I like it a lot, Adam. It's pretty cool. It is very cool. Um, it'll be better down the road. It'll be better down the road. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. I won't say anything that I'm waiting. I didn't, you didn't hear me say that. Uh, <laughs> um, oh God, Quentin James, thoughts on the Gene Simmons trademark? Did you guys see this? I heard so. Well, no, what? What? What is that? He's trying to trademark this. Oh my God, really? Yeah. Holy. Well, you know what they say about trademarks? Like it, it's only as good as your willingness to fight it. Gene Simmons has a lot of money. <laughs> I guess technically, he could sue everyone that's ever heard heavy metal music since nineteen. 80. I guess that's possible. Yeah, everybody who's been at a concert at Ronnie James Dio going like right. this. Right. But I, uh, I, I think in a court you could probably prove that people have been doing that long before that, but if you got enough money to throw away and you're bored, then I guess sure. You know, copyright that and start suing. I think he's just really good at marketing. Yeah, you know, I mean, got to make a name for yourself somehow. So you, yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> no one's ever, no one's ever heard of him. So yeah, well, you can't do it in with music anymore. So. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's true, right? <laughs> we're, we're waiting, but I haven't seen. Um, that's funny. Uh, yeah, Quentin says, "What a tool Gene is." Okay, uh, I, I, I'll I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to keep going here. Ordered from Keith on the Guitar Guru Network, T-Bone says. Oh, so good. Someone someone just bought the ethereal uh, pedal. Oh, cool. Um, and someone said, Dave was killer on the TGB th T TGP thread about bad. You know what that is, Dave? Oh, uh, yeah, I know all about that. That was a, uh, that was a thread about... It was a very long thread. In fact, it's still going. I haven't checked in, I don't think, today at all. Um, as most TGP... P threads do they they go on and on yeah on and on <laughs> and then you think wow really <laughs> just when it couldn't beat a dead uh, horse <laughs> yeah it was it was about it was about the um, it was a, a lot of misinformation and stuff that had to be sort of corrected a bit um, on the gear so, page yeah, <laughs> yeah imagine that <laughs> um, <laughs> So it was it, it was about uh, you know where Friedman amps made and 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 about the relationship with the bad and um, hand wiring versus hybrid boards and <laughs> oh man it went deeper and deeper and deeper and kind of oh. getting attacked a bit here and there but you know I kept you know still plugging away at it you know wow so <laughs> so. Here's the, here's the thing that I have to say, you know, it's like some people, I, I basically the gist of the conversation on that thread was that if you're buying a boutique amplifier, right, they expect you, the builder to make it. Um, well, you know, I kind of came back and said, well, that's fine and dandy. Maybe I'll start making them all myself, but you're going to wait 10 years now for it. Right. <laughs> because... Right. Because you can't, you know, like, even if I, let's just hypothetically say I was building it myself. I'm not going to build more than two a week. That's eight a month. Um, that doesn't even, I mean, I test 70 amps a week or something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, how are you, you're never going to get anywhere. You're just going to be making them out of your garage with no insurance and know this and know that and no marketing and no budget for marketing and 
And you can't and scale. Else. You can't scale and it. The, you can't. You can't scale the business. And when they no, you can't scale the business. And when people when talk start to talk about price of the products and things, they are really not taking into consideration the breakdown of it. You know, you're selling at a, a retail location, so the retailer gets, you know, anywhere from twenty five to forty five percent, depending on whose brand and product, and maybe right. even to fifty percent, depending on what brand we're talking about, what product we're talking about and anything. Mm -hmm. So right, right away, just lop that off. <laughs> then you have your manufacturing cost, which is your cost of your parts plus the labor to manufacture it. That is not the cost of the product because on top of that figure, you have, uh, taxes, payroll taxes. Uh, you have insurance, you have the building that you're building it in. You might have other uh, permits for spraying and, and doing different things with woodworking. You have uh, uh, a guy that is doing your graphic artwork and your marketing. You have a guy, you know, a shipping guy. You have um, an accountant that, you know, isn't cheap. We're talking salaries that are, you know, particularly high, you know. You have a, a product manager that is managing ordering all your parts and making sure that everything's there and everything else. Uh, so you have to factor in all these other people and cost into the cost of the product. Mm -hmm. And then you still have to make some money because there's no point in doing this unless you make some money. Right. So, But they're not taking into consideration all that. And now, if you're a guy in your garage and you're making a product, and you have no overhead, uh, and you double the price and sell it direct to the public, yeah, it's going to be a, a, a better price, sure. But there, it's not scalable. It, it can't. Where do right. you go from there? You're only going to make two amps a week, and that's it, right. forever. What's going to happen in five years whenever something needs done on that amp, whenever it needs repaired? Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, well, then there's repairs, and then there's backing up the product, and right. And if you have tube failures um, uh, in the first three months of owning your amplifier, we ship you new tubes. Right. Um, you know uh, that costs us money, um, because of someone else's fault. Right. Because of the tube company's fault, but right. we're eating it. Right. Um, so you. Just no one, generally people that make these comments just are not in, in, in reality. And it's sort I, of like the same, same comment about people want, um, this is on a di sort of a different subject, but people want all their products made in the, you know, I, I want my product made in the USA. Okay, great. Here's how much it's going to cost. It's going to be, it's a toaster. It's going to be $400. Oh, I can't pay $400 for it. I want to pay $100 for it. Hmm. Well, it can't be made in the USA then. Uh, it, it, it just physically can't. So, but I want it made in the USA. Well, you can't. Then, okay, are you willing to work now for less money to, to have it made in the USA? Hmm. I, I, I mean, it's, no yeah. one thinks about that. And it's just, they, I've always like, said that people that complain I about make a that. high wage, oh, and I want to buy USA made products. Right. Well, you can't have it all. You just can't. Yeah. You know. I, I was um, on our, we do a podcast called Chasing Tone Podcast. And then, uh, this last week, which comes out in two weeks, I was talking about how in America, it's, it's really important to like have it something made in America, at least in yeah. guitar or, you know, guitar pedal land and amp land, you know, instrument land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But those same people have no problem with going to Walmart to buy the food rather yeah. than going to the local farmer. They have no problem to go in to the mall to buy their clothes rather than a local tailor. Mm -hmm. They have no, like all these things you like that come from outside of America. Mm -hmm. You're, you're kind of part of the problem. You're kind of make, you're the one that is kind of making it expensive. So, I mean, it's, it's not going to get fixed and stuff made in America is going to be expensive. And it's, there's no way around it yeah. you know, until, unless everyone wants to, wants to work for two bucks an hour. Well, it's kind of funny too. Like you know, it, it, years ago, it used to be that you you would get uh, cheaper products if they were made in Japan. Mm -hmm. Now, made in Japan products are a premium dollar. Right. Um, 
if you want to manufacture something in Japan, like if you're a Japanese company and you want to manufacture in Japan, it's like premium dollar like it is here to manufacture in the U.S. Uh, it just doesn't. It even might be a, a bigger premium. Yeah. Um, and uh, people, uh, yeah, they don't understand that. The funny thing is, like, I've, I've been told by other, like, um, a friend of mine, Henning Pauly. You, you know who Henning is, right? Yeah, I know Henning, yeah. Uh, everyone should know Henning, right? <laughs> yeah, he's great. <laughs> he's like, He's like, I don't, it's, because it, to, to us Germans, because it's made in the USA means nothing. Yep. And in Absolutely. fact, and where the product is manufactured to most Europeans doesn't mean anything. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it has no weight that it would be made in Germany versus made in Slovakia right. or made in China versus Japan, or it just it makes no weight. It's just a product mm -hmm. and they like the product or they don't. Right. And um, it's either a good, well-made product or not. You know, it, to be honest, it really doesn't matter where it's made. Any, a Chinese-made product can be made well. It's all yeah. about how the product is specced with w the parts that are in it and what it can be made. It can be made to be not cheap. It can be right. made to be a high-quality product. Yeah. It's no different than, I mean, you could have... Uh, something made there versus here, and it it all the parts are exactly the same. The only thing that you're you're is different is the labor. Um, and the funny thing is, what most people don't realize also, you can't say a product is made in the USA unless I don't know the exact figure, but that means everything in the amplifier has to be made in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So amplifier or pedal or anything anything you make mm -hmm. you can't say it's made in the usa because every electronic component that you buy none of them are made in the usa in any electronic component i nothing right you can't buy resistors made in the usa <laughs> not that i don't think so at least Unless I mean, you could probably have someone make some, but you had to buy like a million of them. <laughs> you, you can. I mean, the capacitors we use in our amplifier, the Synergy mustard caps, they're, they're a USA-made cap. None of the other caps ever are. Um, it That's just fine. doesn't – there's literally nothing in any electronic product that is made in the U.S. Doesn't mean uh, it's bad, though. No, it make, makes no difference. Well, there's no other. There's no other source. There's no other right. choices. That's it. That's all you have. Um, right. So, I mean, you know, so when, when you know, that's why amplifiers are, say, you know, amplifiers, pedals, are, it, it says they're assembled or handmade in California or something along the lines of that because you legally can't say made in the USA. Unless I don't know the exact figure, but it's got to be ninety some percent or something right. of every mater every material uh, right. made in the USA to do that. Otherwise, you get, from what I understand, a massive fine. Mm -hmm. Wow! So, yeah, um, interesting. And at the end of the day, the all the the whole debate about whether uh, you know about your amps, particularly Dave, that people are that you're, you're not making them, you know, yourself. They're still great amps. They're still. It, it makes no difference. I mean, no. Right. I mean, no one. If they're producing more than a few amps or a very limited quantity, is not. Uh, you, they're. They'll have help no matter what. Someone is going to help them. You know, mm -hmm. like even a small shop. I mean, there's probably a guy there helping them make it. You know, right. even one employee loading a board or, or doing something, you know, <laughs> there's just no way you can do everything. You can't, you can't do it. I mean, you know, it very limited numbers out of your house, maybe, but you, you just can't right. do it. And, and, you know, it's like our, our team that makes the amps are highly skilled, frankly, to be honest, like sort of Brian was saying about building your own pedals. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you want them making your amp, not me. <laughs> I don't do it every day. I mean, I can do it, of course, but and I have done it, but I don't do it every day. They're going to do a neater job than I am because they do it every single day, and it's the same all the time. It's very consistent. Did you run into that, Brian, with people like, oh, I want the pedal built by you, Brian, not... Every now and then, I do get someone to ask if I can build their pedal. I'm like, well, it's possible, 
but you're talking about a $2,500 pedal. <laughs> mm. I got too much stuff going on, man. And right. besides, I promise you, you, you don't want that because I yeah. have the efficient span of a gnat and I'll probably forget to put something in somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. It's just, I'm just not good. I mean, it's like, like Dave said, I, I started out building my own pedals and I found, figured it out that I suck at that. It's just not my strong suit, you know? Mm -hmm. I can sit in front of a breadboard all day long and come up with different ideas, but to actually take a circuit board and put the same parts in over and over and over and over and over, man, that's just not my personality. Like, I, you don't want that. Right. Let someone else who's really good at doing that, let them, like, like they were saying, those guys are really good at that. They love doing it. Mm -hmm. And they're just, fantastic at it way better than i ever thought about being so absolutely absolutely and, and they they're great at it so that's who you want doing it not me yeah yeah you know i mean you want me to fine tune it hand tune the amplifier for you you have specifics on what you want to hear absolutely that's that would be my forte you know mm -hmm. um you want it different you want some different little things in it okay yeah absolutely but as far as just the basics of building, it's just, it's, they do it better than I do. So, so did the thread deteriorate or did it, uh, uh you know what? I haven't checked in on it. I don't know. Okay. Last I saw it was at nine pages. So. <laughs> oh, that's, that's small. That's small. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, yeah. But, but the day before it was at five, you know, it's, uh Oh, um, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I answered, you know, the questions and stated what I thought and, it's, that's it. That's fine. It's fine. They can ask me questions about it. It's not, not a problem. That's cool. Um, we've got an, uh, another question from Adam EVH. He says, Dave, my buddies all have those mini Marshall fridges. Uh, if I you, saw this. Yeah. If you made one, I'd buy a couple. Maybe you can sell me a Friedman logo and I'll make my own. <laughs> The warm I weather makes me. <laughs> I don't know oh. if any, I'm going to make a fridge in the any time in the near future, but <laughs> I do. I, I do like the idea, though. <laughs> we get merchandise on the Friedman website. Yeah, yeah, we could. Amplifiers, refrigerators. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, espresso maker. Right, right next to t <laughs> right in between the espresso maker and t-shirts, refrigerators. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna leave that to Marshall. That <laughs> seems to be what they do well lately. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> yeah yeah actually I, I i did like the idea of the marshall fridge i thought it was kind of cute but um but yeah I, okay i'm sorry i said great Mar idea Mar Dave. marshall's marshall's is a life uh, marshall is sort of a lifestyle brand at the moment you know it's yeah it's you know the the that little uh um bluetooth uh, little deal that they came out with. Was, speaker. Yeah, that that thing was really cool, actually. Oh, the code? Yeah. No, no, no. The Bluetooth. Uh, oh, this the Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like your iPhone, or whatever. Speaker yeah. thing. It's 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 fantastic. It looks great. You know. Mm -hmm. By the true. way, you can take the Marshall logo off and put a Friedman. It looks really good on it. <laughs> I bet David do a modification on those for the right yeah. price. <laughs> there's, there's one here that's modified just like that. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like you have one. <laughs> My partner Rob does. <laughs> that's funny. Fantastic. Um, all right, we got a cool question here. Oh, actually, uh, Sigs and Strings says, "Great show. Can't believe there's not twenty thousand people watching right now." WTF? Well, there's forty five people watching right now, which is pretty cool. Um, but I if agree every, with you. If every one of those people towed, shared, shared that link with 50 of their friends, we get closer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I agree. Share, share, please subscribe and share. Um, Adam EVA want, EVH wants to know, Brian, desert Island guitar amp and one pedal question mark. Um, I'll show you the guitar. Hang on. Oh, cool. <laughs> There you go. Oh, wait, Dave, anybody buy? Oh, that was fast. I wanted to see if anybody bought your guitar, Dave. Okay. No. My favorite guitar in the world is this Telecaster made by, well, it's not a real Telecaster, but it's made by Charles Whitfield. Mm -hmm. And it looks really beat up. I don't, I don't care about that stuff. I just like the way it feels. It feels like an old Telecaster. Mm -hmm. um, it, I mean, really, it's, 
it's not that it's handmade or anything that does, I mean, it does sound good, but it's just one of those that it was, um, when I played it, it just had that thing for me, you know, I think, and I think that's different to everybody where, you know, you go to a store and one guy may love the way this strat sounds and the next guy picks it up and he's like, Oh, sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, that instrument just kind of fits me perfectly like a warm pair of underwear. I think so. <laughs> um, my favorite pedal, you know, you know what the thing is, I'm really bad about this because like the pedals that I have, all this, let's see if I can, all those pedals there. Wow. Um, I've played through those so many times and I stare at them every day. And so I kind of get burnt out on my own stuff. You hate now, I mean, them I all. I, I do like him, but my favorite one is the new is the one I got on breadboard right now. That's you know I'm tweaking on and I'm in love with you know. Um, and there'll be times where I'll I'll perf one up, put put one on perf board and take it to a gig or something just for fun. And but it's like it's always it's always like the thing that's not out yet. Once once it comes out, once I've played it a billion times and uh, talked about it a billion more times. It kind of loses its, loses some of the magic a little bit to me. I still like them. Like I still love the Plexi Drive. I still love the the Clarksdale's one of my favorite pedals. Uh, the Dracaris, I actually use that with the gain down low. Um, the Ethereal, I've been playing that prototype for a long time. Um, so yeah, I mean that's I'm kind of a weirdo like that where I just uh, I like the I like new stuff. So. Instead of buying it, I just make it. It's kind of the uh, the chase, right? You're chasing it. it and once you when once you got it, kind of now on to the next thing. Yeah. Kind of thing sometimes. Yeah. That's cool. What about amp? What's the uh, what's the desert island amp? Uh, well, I mean, <coughs> to be politically correct, I'd have to say my bravado amp. It's a perfect <laughs> perfect pedal platform amp. Uh, okay, so let's let's I'll just throw that out the window. That's that's not eligible. Uh man, amps, amps are like um, it's kind of like food. You know how sometimes what really sounds good is pizza, and then the next day you're like, I want Mexican food, and then the next day you're like, you know what sounds good? It's just like, uh, you know, a burrito or something. Or <coughs> so, but I mean, like my mind changes constantly. So, mm -hmm. um, pro here here lately, I've really I've got an AC fifteen. That I've been playing a lot through. I've been digging that a lot. And it's just been in one of those moods. I think it's probably because I've been playing with the ethereal a lot for videos and stuff. Mm. Um, and it just sounds super killer through the AC15. Newer one, older one. This is actually this is a re <clears throat> excuse me, it's a reissue, and I think I think I put a different speaker in it. I forget now. I think I put a different speaker in it. Now to go speaker. Mm. Um, Dave let me Dave, Dave gave me not gave it loaned me a uh, it's like a JCM eight hundred circuit, and that's the best Marshallist JCM eight hundred I've ever ever played through. It's fantastic. Hmm. Love that thing. Um, in fact, I uh, I need to get that back to him. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. I still got that. Um, I don't think it's a problem. I have another one. <laughs> oh, two of them. <laughs> Stereo. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, cool. you know, I mean, you know, with me, with the stuff I do, like, I kind of gravitate more to cleanish stuff. So I, I like something boxy. And then I like something, <coughs> excuse me, something a little more black facey. Um, and I don't run them in stereo usually, but like, that's, that's my two different flavors. So if I go to play a gig, sometimes I'll take something black facey. Sometimes mm. I'll take something more along the box line. So that's cool. Now with the black face, do you typically find that using a pedal, at least for me, I I've, I've got a black face type amp. Um, I've got to turn the bright switch off of it be before oh, I'm well, you need to put a five position bright switch on it. So <laughs> it's basically <laughs> just one one cap and, and you can put some resistance in it. And so you can take so that's one of the things I do with the bravado is because that cap is on a lot of different amps. It's just a cap off the volume control, hmm. and um, and so when you take that cap out, that's like the left channel of the deluxe reverb. You put that cap in, that's the right channel. That's it's really bright, really dull. 
So mm. if you have just different parameters between the two, then you have everything from dull all the way to brighter, right? Mm -hmm. So like um, that was something I like to do with deluxe reverbs, just stuff like that. Just little tweaks like that, changing the changing the tone stack a bit. I like to put a 12 AT7 or an AU7 in the phase inverter. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's I like a lot of tube screamery stuff because I play primarily more country-ish type of things. Mm -hmm. And a tube screamer with a blackface style thing, just with a Telecaster. That and works it, great. It just works, man. Yeah, that's a great combo. That's cool. Very cool. Um, I'm going to jump back in the chat here. Scott MacArthur, hey everyone, checking in. Um, just got on. Rango says tequila tonight. <laughs> hey, I already I answered him. Yeah, no, nope. not tonight. Uh, and la like, well, that's right. Last show was tequila. Oh yes. Yeah. Te basically, it was tequila and also no food all day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, guys and Duval beer. <laughs> so um all of that is a bad bad thing <laughs> <laughs> it did not have we a good spiraled result. we sort of spiraled out of control towards the end so it was great the, though by the night you guys were like i love you so much by I the end of the night i couldn't speak anymore <laughs> so let's just, let's just i was done all you see is day's head like pete, this pete thorne pete thorne was like starting to slur his words towards yeah. the end <laughs> You know, George uh, was pretty well. He, George holds his liquor pretty well. He held it pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. You, you, the, the best was when you just had that big yawn, Dave. You were just like, well, you know, the thing was, the thing was, like I said, like I, like it wasn't the quantity that I had. It's the fact that I hadn't eaten anything yeah. Yeah. at all, not an ounce of food all day, and I started doing that, and I was like, wow, boom. <laughs> yeah, it, it hits you hard. Yeah, it hits you hard. Uh, Molly says heading to work, just jumping in to say hi. What's up, Molly? Um, let's see. Rango says, I'll bring you some when I bring my BE100 for a mod. Oh, <laughs> I guess he says he's going to bring you some tequila. Yeah. Um, Nathan Napler says, excited for the ethereal, can't wait for it to come in the mail. Very cool. Um, Dave needs a stiff shot of tequila. He looks thirsty. Um, <laughs> Uh, someone said metal zone. Yeah, dude. Um, okay. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, I, I actually have a question for you, Brian. That's something that sure. just kind of thought in my head, which is, you know, when you're talking about breadboarding and coming up with these ideas, like what's the process for you? Like, do you just start from like, okay, well, I'm going to work on a fuzz now. And I, you know, I know that for a fuzz, this is the type of resistor or capacitor I need to put in there. I, I'm a complete novice to this. So I'm, I may sound yeah, like a complete so Different things. Um, so sometimes, like for example, the ethereal came about because I, I don't even remember what song it was now. I think it, this is going to sound stupid. I think it started because I was in the car with my kids and we were listening to like Maroon 5 or something on the radio. And me being a dork, rather than listening to the song, I'm always like thinking of what's going on, like mix wise and you know what kind of reverbs are using that sort of thing and i on part of the vocals in one song i heard this really like ambient reverb I'm like holy crap that sounds great not the song necessarily i just be like the actual effect mm -hmm. I'm like wow that is a cool thing and um so yeah i just started i just started messing around with the the uh, actually used a spin chip for that and um just uh, just started messing around with that uh, there's other times where I just feel like messing around and doing a fuzz or I feel like making an overdrive or I feel like, you know, messing around with a phaser or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, sometimes it comes out to nothing. Sometimes I'm working on it. I'm like, eh, it's just not working tonight. And I put it away. Kind of like if you're writing a song, like it's just not working, you know, and you put it away for another day. Um, other times, I, there's been times I've just started with a blank canvas and actually this happened not too long ago. I was planning on making an overdrive. By the time I was done, I had came out with a fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> and it came out pretty cool. And I'm like, huh, I need to uh, get some prototypes made of this guy. I think this is, I think I'm onto something here. Um, so cool. yeah, it's a happy accident, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. There's never really one thing. I don't, I don't really ever sit down and say, all right, well, the schedule see, says I need to come out with the Univibe. So let's go ahead and work on that right now. 
Right, right. Is it ever driven by just uh, customer requests also? Like, oh, I'd, it, I'd love to have this, this, and this. And then you're like, oh, okay, man, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, you know, so if, um, you know, if everyone is saying, I wish I had a pedal that sounded like fart sounds or something like that, wouldn't be into it. But if, you know, I would kept getting, you know, 10 emails a day for, for, for that, I would be like, if that's what people want, like, that's my job is to provide happiness to guitar players who want fart sounds. So just figure out how we're going to put fart sounds in a pedal. I think you just started something, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a thread on the gear page tomorrow. Uh -oh. <laughs> Who wants uh, fart sounds on their pedal board? Only uh -oh. if it's analog. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Brian and Dave, best soldering irons and how much solder do you go through in a year? <laughs> Oh hmm. uh, God, I have no idea how much solder. Uh, yeah, we. I just use, I use uh, and in, in production too. We use Heiko irons. Um, the model escapes me right now. It's on my bench, and I'm trying to see what it is. <laughs> it's a little station. It's a little soldering station. Heiko digital one, mm. uh, adjustable temperature and stuff. That you know, yeah. I, over time, that's just proven to be a really reliable um, iron, and uh, it's worked really well. Um, I could probably look it up if anyone really wants the information. <laughs> well, uh, Adam EVH says he he wrote, "I want a good soldering iron. I like tinkering too." I I just went to uh, uh, Home Depot and I bought one that was like a little little station. Yeah, thing. that's not going to be good. No, <laughs> not probably not. Okay. Um, okay. So much. I there, there's another cheap one I used to use all the time that was great. At, it's the um, the the one that we use is the uh, the the Heiko H A K K O F X dash eight eight D D is in David. Uh, it's about a hundred bucks. Wow, so, or a hundred ish. So the twenty dollar one I bought is not very good. Uh, yeah, you're, you're limited by you know, it. It, yeah. it. Might be okay for what you maybe need to do with it, but I was just building guitars with it. Just wiring up guitars. Ah, well, if it melts the solder and it flows, then you're okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, did. to be honest, so They're, they all work. <laughs> yeah. so, but maybe it's not meant for amps. Oh, that's cool. A hundred bucks. Where do you buy it? Bucks. Uh, you can look at. I mean, you can get them off eBay. You can get them at Fry's Electronics. You can get them at. Uh, they're all over the place. If you just look that up, I mean, I'm just looking right now. It's tons of. Uh, T-Bone wants to know, where are the fart pedals built? <laughs> <laughs> In the bathroom. Uh, that's funny. Uh, oh, then, then we have a suggestion for the Wampler Pooter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to ask what that is. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the Wampler Futz. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, let's see. Can you ask Brian his thoughts on Univibes? Lou Sequoia wants to know. Um, there was another guy that had the same kind of question, but he was saying, why is it hard, not hard to make uh, a vintage Univibe sound in a pedal? It's, it's not that it's not that hard. It, it, it's not that hard. You can. But the real problem that you have now is the photo cells. You can't ship them to Europe. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not Rojas compliant. Right. So um, if there's a photo cell, which is the right way to do it, uh, the proper sounding traditional Univibe, uh, but the photo cells. So I think some people get away with it maybe, but <laughs> yeah, so some people go ahead and do it and take their chances, but I don't like fines <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or jail. <laughs> so, oh wow. So yeah, I mean, I, I have a great, I have a great Univibe design that, um, I might release, but it would be a U.S. only release. So, wow, I love yeah. Univibes though. So Univibes like the MXR copies? No, they... no, no, not the MXR. <laughs> no, I don't have the MXR, one. but I don't, I don't think those sound anything like uh, a Univibe at all. Yeah, the old school ones. Yeah, right. uh, I mean, uh, if, uh, if you get a good full tone one, it sounds it's it sounds pretty good and authentic. If you get um, uh, you know, even the Voodoo Lab Micro Vibe was pretty cool when they had mm -hmm. it. Uh, or if they, I, think, like, I think I they like still that. have it. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, I, I worked on it with him a long, long time ago. And uh, it was all, it's all about how the pulse being right. And it's, it's like an off balance pulse and it, it doesn't evenly sweep. It kind of, it's like kind of like a rubber band, yin yang, yin yang. It, 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 if it doesn't do that just right, it's not right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the vi that other company out of where are they from? The Vibe, not Vibe Unit, Vibe, Vibe Tool or Vibe. The little Steve Stevens had it on his pedal board. Hmm. Really good little pet Vibe Unit. Um, I heard of that one. Me either. Vibe. Mm. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying they're a vibe machine. I think. Oh, vibe machine. Yeah, I think so. I think that's it. Brian, uh, did you ever work? Yeah. Did you ever work on one before? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we're actually working on one right now, and uh, and it, it's still in like the design phase. So I mean, like we've we've gotten back and forth with using an LED or whether using a lamp and photocells. I mean, it's it's really tough to, with an LED to get it to, to work right, and. You know, a Vactral yeah. support, and so I—I I mean, I do have something that's in the process, but it's not—it's nowhere near ready to even talk about. Like, here's the features we're having with it, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's but yeah, I mean, like, it's a dry, dry bell vibe machine. I was right. So okay, hmm. that one sounds great. That's cool. So, um, you know, what about tape echo? Oh. Uh, you know, like there's so many of these copies of tape echoes that are coming out today, like the Echoplex or you know that kind of thing. And uh, is there any is there anything that's really good for that? I think Brian, you have one, right? I have the faux tape echo. Yeah, it's been out for a while. And it's, I mean, it's it's good. It's decent. Uh, I, I say decent. This is how I, I like. It's been out for so long. I'm like, I'm ready to move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. I can do better. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's. I mean it's cool. I, I think so many people have done, so, you know, some sort of tape echo. It's um, man, like every there's a there's a bunch of really good ones, and there's some really shitty ones, and there's some that are just okay, you know. And I don't know, like me myself, I'm just ready for something different, mm -hmm. you know. So I think like because I'm still thinking like like we're working on a delay right now, and I'm thinking. Um, you know, like what kind of stuff I want that delay to do, and it's not—it's not a tape echo at all, right? You know? uh, but it's just—I don't know. Like, I mean, like Cattle and Bread made a really good tape echo with like the Echo Rec or whatever yeah. it's called. I mean, it's—it's it's a, it's a great. And, Str and Strymon Al Capistan. Yeah, Strymon's got a good one. That was so. a great one. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, See, I bought those the the Cattle and Bread Bell Epoch. Bell Epoch, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not—I'm not a fan, but maybe I should have gotten the other one. Which one is Eric Johnson using? I forget if it's the Echo Rec or the Belly Puck. But he's got like several know. of them. And apparently he swears by them. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, th those are cool. I mean, yeah, I dig them. Okay. I'll, maybe I'll check out the Strymon. Um, or yours as well, um, Brian. Well, here's the thing. I mean, most of those pedals are designed, um, depends on where you're going to put, where you're going to put your delay. Uh, if it's in front of an amp, uh, that's where the tape echo pedals are designed to go, not in the loop of the amp. It won't, they don't really sound right in the loop of the amp. Um, so that's the question you have to ask. You know, do you want it in front or do you want it in, in the loop? And, you know, if you want it in the loop, you want a digital delay, really. Mm. You know, you don't want it necessarily a tape echo pedal. Uh, yeah, that's a good, good recommend. You, you use the tape echo in front. But then you, yeah. But but the then, so that's where they were originally designed. I mean, like a, a, a real Echoplex was, you know, all the ones that you've heard, Van Halen and everything else. It was in front of the amp. So, but the thing about it is, is it can't be too clean. It's got to be kind of gritty. Otherwise, it doesn't mate well in front of the amp. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, even even the little MXR uh, carbon copy works pretty well in front of an amp. Mm -hmm. One of the better ones in front of the amp. I know one of yours does. I know that Pete Thorne did one, and we were listening to one of yours, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was re re really good in front of the amp. I think he showed that in the video. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's when the delay doesn't get in the way, doesn't you're not tripping over it as much. Right. When it's sitting okay, mm -hmm. that's when it's working right. 
Right, right. Because if it's in front of the amp and then it just keeps going. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hear you're gonna kind of trip over it a yeah. lot of times in front of the amp. It's way different than if it's in the loop. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, we've got another question here from J Zach. Zach says Friedman small box combo. What cabinet would you recommend expanded for both clean channel one and smooth distorted leads high channel two? Uh, hey, that's a good question. You know, it's um. It depends. I mean, you already have the open back cabinet, so my, my tendency would think you maybe want some sort of closed back cabinet. So maybe maybe the 212. It depends on how big of a cabinet you want. Uh, the 212 or maybe even one of our 112s might, might be cool. Um, you'll, then you'll get kind of a closed back sound and an open back sound at the same time. It's, uh, it'd be good. Okay, that's cool. Um, somebody, somebody wrote, Tom Platts wrote Memory Man. I've never had one of those pedals. Memory Man is great in front of an amp, but that, that's a, you know, a very short delay. It's, a, uh, it's kind of a modulated delay. That, that, that's a particular sound. I mean, made famous originally by The Edge and, and, and several other people, you know. And it's, uh, oh, it's a great pedal. That's a cool pedal. I actually like it for its modulation that it can do with, with, without even using the delay. The, much of the delay time. Hmm. Um, Mark Z says, Brian just bought a Paisley drive and it's awesome. Uh, what's the pedal based off of? And he said, also, I run it through a Runt 20 combo. I love basic clean channel and it's just an awesome amp. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, no problem. I agree with that. So what, what, what's the... Uh... Brian's an empty chair right now, so he can't answer what it's based off. <laughs> oh, what happened with Brian? He ran in the back. Not there. His chair's there. <laughs> oh wow! He disappeared. Um, <laughs> Maybe he's, he slipped out. There, there he is. is. Oh, all okay, Brian? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I had to take a pit stop. No problem. <laughs> I have a small bladder. Thanks, yeah, you, men you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave's talking about it. That's my chance. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Boom. <laughs> no, we, we got one question for you though. He wants to know what what's the um and Mark Z wants to know what's the uh Paisley drive based off of? It's roughly based around a tube screamer-ish type of thing. Uh so it's you know it's a non-inverting op amp into uh, that same sort of tone control, got a low pass in between. And um I'm clipping a little bit differently, so it's a little a little bit fuzzier. Uh the switches, let me think here. The switches. Okay, so yeah. Uh, a bright switch. I'm trying to remember what I did with the bright switch. Okay, yeah. So both those switches there are, are totally messing with the filtering in between the two op amp stages. And um, so, like, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's tube screamer ish. Like, if you're looking at it schematically, mm -hmm. but if you put it up next to a, like a tube screamer, then you'd be like, this is not really tube screamery. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's it's kind of its own beast. But I mean, you know, it's like. You know, you could take, um, you, I mean, Dave, you could take like, a bunch of different amps and say, well, they look similar on a schematic, but they sound radically different whenever, you know, you, you're playing through them. Just based on what you're doing in, bet in between each stage is, is way more important than, you know, if you're using uh, a 4558 op amp, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting to know, I mean, like even with a lot of my amps and some of the artist amps that we have, it was all sort of originally based off the BE-100 amplifier. And, and it's amazing how similar the circuit can look on paper, but changing a few things can radically alter the results. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, really noticeably, where you're right. hearing the amps and they sound like totally different amps. Yeah. Um, there might only be five parts difference or something, but but yeah. you know it it but it can radically alter the the overall tone of the amp for sure. Right. Like really easy. I think, I think I think too many people get really caught up on like, well, what's it based off of? You know, and that's a lot like the guitar player in the back of the room. Look at the guy on the stage playing. Like he missed that note uh, because there's there's so much going on besides what's like seeing like two different op amps that doesn't mean it's a tube screamer it doesn't mean it's a timmy it doesn't mean it's you know whatever circuit you want to call it 
Like there's mm -hmm. everything you're doing around those is really what's important, at least in pedals. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean you got you can't you can't get too caught up in that sort of thing, really. I don't think. No. no. I mean, if it, you know, like I have no problem with telling someone, yeah, it was kind of based around a tube screamer. So it's not like I'm trying to hide anything, but I think, especially with if you're a DIYer, I mean, it's 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 really fun. Actually, you know what? Who did this? Um, Earthquaker took a tube screamer circuit, put a bunch of different things on pots and switches, and so you can radically change this tube screamer circuit into well, a, a bunch of different things. Really cool idea, uh, Jamie for Earthquaker. I, I thought that was a great idea for a pedal. Just take a tube screamer circuit and change it, you know, in every which way possible. Just so. give the give the user to the the ability to change it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Or keep it stock, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty yep. cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, someone wrote Eric Johnson uses two uses a Bell Epoch. No, it is okay. I knew it was cattle and bread stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then someone wrote Eric Johnson uses two Bell Epochs and an Echo Rack. So okay, um, interesting. Uh, let's see. How you doing on time, Brian? You all right? Oh uh, yeah, I'm fine for right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, how many guitarists does it take to change a light bulb? Okay, I don't want to answer that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Be stop the revolving door of amps in my rig. It's this. It, it's the sound in my head. I guess I have to share with Dave. Uh, it scares me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great that's amp. That's great. That's a great amp. Um, so let's see. Uh, no, someone said, "Did we lose Brian?" And it says he's making another pedal. <laughs> <laughs> he got he got bored. He's breadboarding. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, let's see. Uh, why can't they make NKT two seven fives like they used to? I don't know what that is. I always ask people that every time I'm sitting sitting. In fact, I was in bed last night and I was asking my wife the same thing. <sighs> And she said, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? No, she said, uh, dude, don't sweat it. Find something else, put different parts around it, and life will be good. Hey, don't don't sweat the thorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm totally confused. What, what is an NKT275? Yeah. Uh, it's a transistor of some sort, I'm sure. Oh. I haven't looked it up, but it's probably okay. a transistor. <laughs> Brian Wampler? Brian Wampler. Oh, was is that, that Peter? Pete? That's Pete walking by. <laughs> he did a good video today. He did a great video. Yeah, absolutely. Every time he plays, I hate the guy because it makes me want to quit. There he is. I hey, Pete. Pete. But I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they can hear you. We can hear him. <laughs> yeah. Tell him have a good night. <laughs> have a good night, they say. He's probably making another video. <laughs> it looked like it because he was wearing the same shirt he made the uh, the ethereal video I think he doesn't sleep <laughs> <laughs> that's overrated the musician life so um, let's see uh, any other questions that we've got here well uh, you know someone someone pointed out um, when we were talking about Univibes in fact George Pahome chimed in and texted me he goes have you Brian have you seen this vibe bro Hmm. Vibro, I just looked it up. It's it's from the original manufacturer of the the Univibe back in the day, Shinny. Yeah, uh -huh. and they make they make it again, and it's a authentic recreation. Huh. Uh, it looks like the original. I hmm. mean, like very much so. And it's huh. got the, and it's got the photo cells in it. Oh yeah, yeah, it would have yeah. It's it's uh wow, looks interesting. It's like six hundred dollars, but wow. Yeah, but is it handmade in America, Dave? That's really uh, well, the the original ones weren't, so <laughs> it's it's made by the original factory, so that's worth the six hundred, right? <laughs> you might be able to I don't even know what original one goes for these days. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know the thing I noticed about the original vibes, though, is that that they're really hit and miss. Mm -hmm. So um, some of them don't sound that great. Some mm -hmm. of them sound great. Yep. This looks yep. pretty cool, though. Just from the way it looks, makes me want to have it. <laughs> <laughs> is it big? 
I, you know what? I can't really tell how big it is from the from the, from the picture. Uh, hmm. I have to I have to look into it more. I'm just glancing at it on the internet. <laughs> That's cool. Very cool. So Brian, you're going to be at Nam, right? And um, get for us next week. Nam two weeks later. Yep. Yep. Great. <laughs> and I got well, to make, you can just drive. You can just drive to all these places, right? Well, well, yeah. Actually, we do drive to both of those. Yeah. When, yeah. But when we're in L.A., like you guys, to drive to L.A. now, so I have to fly there. Which that's true. Yep. 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 Sucks. But uh, so yeah. So we'll go. I'll go to Gear Fest next week. Then I got a vacation in Clearwater, Florida, and then I'm going to Nam. And yeah. So three weeks of being gone, which is cool in a way. Yeah, so I, I always love the guitar shows because like that's where you can actually talk face to face to people who buy your stuff versus mm -hmm. like behind some anonymous user on Facebook or Instagram or something. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so like that stuff's really fun, but I, I don't think it's fun to really go and, and like watch, but be able to leave when you and I'm, Dave can tell about this. Sure. <laughs> when you have to be at the booth the entire time, by the time uh. the show is over, you're like. You know, like if you're walking out and someone asks, if someone asked me about a guitar pedal, we're going to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like no, you you go like if if you have to travel to your hotel and you have to get in your car right after Nam or something, you literally get in your car and if your radio was on, you're you're like you're lunging at the dashboard to turn it off. Yes, right. you know, quiet. And, okay, and no one talk so we at least get to the restaurant. Okay, Just right. Don't talk. No one talk, <laughs> you know, and everyone's in the same boat. They're just like, oh, keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's just noise. Especially, yeah, especially at Nam, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, it, well, but Sweetwater is going to be um, that's outside, right? So it's not that bad, it's, is it? It's outside in a bunch of tents on hot blacktop pavement in humid, warm, muggy air. With lots of mosquitoes, and wow. then it rains, and everything floods for fifteen minutes, and then yeah, it gets that's, that's hotter. A, so, so, <laughs> so the weather says that um, you're going to have early morning thunderstorms on Friday. I think uh, on setup day there's going to be rain also, which is awesome. going to be a, a just a peach of, oh, of time. Yeah. And uh, but the temperature is only going to be like eighty two ish. Uh, well, so it's good. not going to be up in the 90s, and uh, and the uh, the humidity is going to be 50 some percent. So oh, that's not, well, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, some, sometimes it's like 95 out, and like and that last year. Last year was pleasant. The year last before year. that, two years when ago, it rained, right and yeah. it was just like it literally. I swear to God, I, I I took one of our employees was with us on the trip that had had always lived in Southern California and stuff, and uh, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't uh, very. Uh, he'd never <laughs> been back east, really, in 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 heat and humidity. Um, and we're on setup day, and it's like it's like ninety and ninety percent humidity on that setup day, and it's just muggy as all hell. Right. And the air is thick, and I looked <laughs> over at him, and I thought he was gonna die. <laughs> I literally, yeah. he looked like he was gonna pass out and die. And I'm like, going, you just gotta." Become one with the the heat and the uh, <laughs> sweat and everything. You just got to let it go and just like, okay, I'm gonna be wet. It's just the way it's gonna be. And just um, drink a lot of water because I I grew up at I grew up with you know humidity and stuff in Michigan and stuff and so that's oh, how you're from Michigan, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not. I mean, I grew up with, with seasons and everything. So you know, <laughs> not, I I remember what it's like and uh, you know. It's, <laughs> You're the lucky one who escaped. Yeah. Yeah, I escaped. I'm ready to go back. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. That's, that's California funny. California is over with for me. But there's a lot of people who are like. I mean, the out. weather's the weather's great all the time. It never, you know, hardly. Well, this year we it rained, but um, <laughs> hardly ever rains generally, and it's sunny all the time. What's the weather like? Well, it's 80 and sunny. That's pretty much all the time. God, that sucks so bad. How do you deal with that? <laughs> well, you like know what? It. After a while, after a while, you're kind of like, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> again. So I've never experienced that. Yeah. So funny. When, we, when I went to Nam, it was like nonstop rain. 
that entire time. Yeah, you got you got a yeah. Well, this fun. Well, like I said, like this year we we have had a bunch of rain, which is good because we really needed it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but because everything was turning gr- brown everywhere. I mean, really brown. It was you know years of drought basically, and uh, yeah, yeah. It it's just good. not very pretty to look at, you know. When everything turns to mud. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I mean, just no. In general, like the. Right. It's not that I don't. I don't find the the landscape very pretty here. You know, it's uh, it's deserty. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm more. I'm more of a green, woodsy kind of guy, and I like. I like seeing green trees, and it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> See, for me, Mark's in a perfect place. Like, if I if I had a if I could live near a beach, I wouldn't get any work done. I just would not. Really. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny because I ne- I never go to the beach. And my brother lives in in uh, Tampa or not Tampa, but uh, Sarasota, and he says the same thing. Like, yeah, we never go to the beach. I'm like, what? What? Why would you not go to the beach? Living like <laughs> ten miles away from it. <laughs> it's it's. I don't know. I, I grew up here most of my you know my teenage and you know life and up, and uh, I used to go to the beach all the time when I was in high school. You know that that was the place to go to, and. Especially spring break, you know, Fort yeah. Lauderdale Strip. I mean, oh, yeah. the eighties, mm-hmm. Fort Lauderdale Strip. Uh, that was the place to go. And then I, just, I guess I got kind of burnt out on it. And I was never a big fan of the water. Like I was just like, oh, salt water is so nasty. Um, really? Yeah, it just just for me. My wife loves it. Totally loves it. But for me, I just I, I'd rather go in a pool. You know, like I, yeah. I I have a pool. I'll dive in the pool. That that'll, that'll work. So, <laughs> uh, what about yeah, you, right? Dave? You have a pool, I have right? A pool. I don't. I don't. I like the ocean. You know, funny. I don't care for sand. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, I'm not a big yeah, sand you know, guy either. Like I, I, I hate the sand. That's the bad part to me. Um, I, I, I like actually going in, in the ocean, but I just can't take the sand. You get, you come out wet, and the sand everywhere. It's all over you, and it's just like right. Oh. Yeah, I, actually, that's... and then you know, like you take your kids to the beach. You take the kids to the beach, and they have sand in every crack they have. You know, and it's just like <laughs> you get home, and you're just like sands all over your floor because they took their clothes off in the middle of the floor, and it's just like, oh. it's true. It's true. Yeah, I, and I hate yeah. like just cleaning that's myself true. off at the at the beach. You know, after yeah, it's just brutal. Yeah, um, it's, not, it's not that great. Yeah. Although I wouldn't, I would say like down in the Carolinas, like North Carolina, and down in that area and the beach areas and stuff that that that's pretty cool. <laughs> I kind of like that area. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And you said where did you say you were going, Brian? Uh in Florida. Yeah. Clearwater. Clearwater. Okay, yeah, that's that's nice. The weather is it's hot right now. Just so you know. That yeah, that's I, I hear that, but. There's this huge body of water right next to it. I, I plan to spend most of my time inside of that. Uh, probably with a, be- with a beer barely above the surface of the water. That's that's kind of yeah, my there vacation. There you go, perfect. Like I just I'll be like in the water with the beer. I'll be that, that balding forty year old guy at the you know can of beer in the water, yeah, and uh, just chilling for for you know three or four days. <laughs> And then back I'll take, I'll, I'll, over Florida though. Over Florida, I gotta say, I'll take Hawaii over Florida. Never been there. Me either. Never yeah. been there. No, oh man, that's, that's, that's a bu- out. That's on the bucket list. That that's just beautiful. I, I love it there, especially like Maui or or something like that, or Kauai or Maui or. Oh, I gotta go. I like Honolulu and stuff. is more like a city. It's like a different. It's a different thing. Although the North Shore of, of, of that island is amazing, but hmm. yeah, no, it's I worth it's they, worth a trip. Let me tell you. I wish they'd put a Nam there. If they could put a Nam there or a Gear Fest there, oh fucking no, no one, <laughs> no one would be at the show. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. No, I'm kidding. That's, that's funny. <laughs> oh, there talk? Someone was talking about having having it in Vegas sometime. I'm like, oh, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that would be bad. Wasn't Putting Nam in Vegas? Huh? It was in it was in New know. York at one time, right? Huh? Wasn't Nam in New York at what one was time? That? Uh, I don't. Not that I remember. No. Um, they had for a while when they were working on the Anaheim Convention Center, they had Nam in the L.A. Convention Center, which 
it was nice because it was close, but um, mm -hmm. okay. facilities weren't – at the time, there wasn't enough hotels and things in that area. Um, I think it would be different now if that happened because downtown L.A. has been built up so much um, in the last 10 years um, and so many more hotels and nightlife and different things going on down there now. Uh, it, it's, it would be a lot better now. But uh, no idea if that'll ever happen. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Keith from the Guitar Guru Network says, lots of people are heading back to the Motor City. Yeah, right? Yeah, that, that city's on a crazy upswing. Uh, really? Crazy rebuild, really? rebuild and growth. Uh, and uh, very artistic community that's moved in now. And... Um, Crazy restaurants and just just great music and uh, a very cool place and you, God, you can get a home for nothing. <laughs> yeah, especially compared to LA. Even right? it, 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 well, well, yeah. I mean, even in a really nice neighborhood, you can get a home for nothing. Really, I mean, um, you know, if you buy something in the city of Detroit, you really can get it for nothing. But um, but like in you know. I think, you know, your average small little house, you know, in a suburb, uh, in a nice area would, would be like $150,000. Yeah. yeah. You can't wow. buy a condo here for that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. In fact, in fact, you can't buy a house for less than $450,000, I don't think, anywhere in L.A. right now. And wow. that's going to be tiny. That's going to be tiny. I mean, like, like in Watts, you, you will, you will buy a house for that price you know like <laughs> right in, in areas you wouldn't want to live you, you know you can buy a house yeah a house down the street from me in north hollywood which is a nice little neighborhood that i'm in i mean you know seven eight hundred thousand dollars all day long wow I, I, it's just too much money it's just too it just come on i mean like if i want to buy a house i don't own a house currently i used to own houses and i sold and made some money on but um, I haven't owned a house for like 10 years at least. Mm. And um, I couldn't even buy one now. It, yeah, it, it's, it's, just... it's just stupid. I mean, uh, could I buy one? Yeah, I could buy one. But um, one, you'd need a huge down payment. Two, you would be paying some exorbitant figure. I'm 48 now. That means I'm paying till I'm 78. Right. <laughs> How am I going to pay that money when I'm 78? You know, it's like, right. do you really want to be paying a, a four thousand dollar mortgage when you're 78 years old? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. think so. And that's the harsh reality of it all. And even even the rents have escalated to the point of like breaking. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, it's like so. it's like New York City. New York City is insane. Try getting an apartment. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's. It's insane. Yeah. New York's worse. Yeah. It's just, it's, it is crazy. Hey, you know, we got a really great question here for you, Brian. Uh, sure. I, be I believe it's from Keith, but the Guitar Guru Network asked, Brian, I've done well selling the bravado and get a lot of questions about how it came to be. How it, how it came to be, like how we came up with that yeah. product idea? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the idea came up just because. I'm a pedal nerd and I always wanted something that like all pedals sounded good with. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean like for example, you know, like we talked about the deluxe reverb earlier. Um, great amp. Some stuff sounds cool through it. Some stuff sounds not so cool through it. Um, and I, I just wanted, I wanted something that no matter what you put through it, no matter if it was like, you know, a metal zone or, you know, if it was too screamery or if it was more like a rat, like whatever it was, it was it was going to be you were going to be able to dial in good enough to get um, that pedal or at least the, that dirt section to sound really good. So that was really what I was achieving. Like I said, it all goes back to something that I needed myself as a player. Mm -hmm. That's what I needed because you know if I'm going to play a gig, I'm taking a stupid amount of pedals because I'm an idiot, you know. And um, and so I, w I wanted that's what I was looking for, just like the perfect amp that um, that would do that. So like. That, like there's really there's really no magic story to it. I mean, it kind of starts with just tweaking around on uh, on a simple platform, which it kind of started from more of a blackface sort of thing. 
And um, you know, like we talked about earlier, if you, depending on what you do between each stage, that's really what, kind of what flavors the amp and what really tailors it to do something different. You know. So, so the amp is totally. It's a clean, clean platform. There's no second well, channel. I mean, so, so I think a lot of people, a lot of pe there's no second channel. Yeah, but a, a lot of people get confused where they would actually when they actually when they play it, and they're like flavor to it. And I'm like, yeah, just just because it's a good platform, a good pedal platform amp, doesn't mean that it's going to be totally neutral and flat and life lifeless. You know, mm. I didn't want that. I just wanted something that, um, you know, like I was talking about that that five position bright switch. Um, that's kind of a big deal when it comes to pedals because that little capacitor there off that volume knob, that is what gives you the fizzies on a lot of dirt pedals. Mm -hmm. So dialing that guy in is uh, is really going to make or break a lot of a lot of a lot of pedals if you're if you're using it clean. Now, if, once you start using it dirty, then we're talking a whole different thing. But uh, but that's you know that's that's kind of where I was approaching it from. Well, that's cool. And um, where can people get that? I, I, obviously, they can get it from the Guitar of Guru Network, but um, any other places that you're, you're selling that? Uh, I know there is. On, honestly, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you which particular stores have them or not. I, I know Sweetwater has them. Uh, okay. uh, I, I think Anderton's maybe, and if you're in the UK, have them. I'm not, I'm not sure over across the USA. That's, again, one of the things that I take my hands off of is, is what, what stores have what products. I just... I'd rather design stuff, man, and make videos for people and be a be a fool. I'm very good at being <laughs> stupid. That's that's my talent. I'm very good at making an idiot of myself. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> so. At least that's what my wife tells me. That, see? <laughs> that's funny. Um, Thirty flip size says Dave buy a house will pay double for Freeman products. <gasps> <laughs> I somehow don't think you will. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, Keith says thank you, by the way, um, which is cool. And um, so, what else is going on, guys? Because I think we ran out of the questions in the chat there. Uh, <laughs> a lot of questions. <laughs> ran out of questions. I think I've gone through it all. Did you see any other questions, Dave? Uh, I am not looking at it right this second, but I didn't, I think you covered most of the ones that I saw in a little while ago. Yeah, actually we got one here from Rango. He says, Mark, how's the EVH guitar right behind you? Uh, is that your number one? Um, I love that guitar. Uh, I got that at NAMM by the way, uh, which was really cool. Uh, it was a Wolfgang USA. Very cool guitar. It's not my number one, um, just yet, but I really do love it though. It's a very cool guitar. And what, something I found out interesting that they, um, you know, uh, Dave, you know Sean Silas who works for Fender? I, I know the name. I don't really know him, no. Okay, yeah. So he works for Fender, and he. it's funny because when I got the guitar, I checked the inside of the case, and, you know, it has the built by, and it had mm -hmm. uh, SS on that it was built by. So I took a picture of it, and I sent it to Sean. I said, Sean, just by chance, did you happen to build this guitar? And he writes me back. He's like, I sure did. <laughs> I was like, that is super cool. Um, so he built the guitar, which is which is cool. And then on top okay. of that, I, it's a bit dark. Like the guitar has a bit of a, um, it sounds different than the other EVH guitars that I have. So I, I asked him, hmm. there was there's a, a capacitor on it or there's something on the, on the volume knob. And... Mm -hmm. um, that isn't on the other Wolfgangs I have, and he said it was a recent change that they made on the line of guitar on the Wolfgangs. They're putting that on Ed and Chip. Yeah, Ellis. but that's 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 to uh, that's so when you roll down the volume knob, it it gets brighter. Oh, that's in, it. In, in, the, in the full up position, it wouldn't make any difference. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so even I if knew, I cut it, I, I knew I knew the history behind that and where it came from. So. Oh really? Yeah, if you cut it, it's not going to do anything to the uh, full up tone. Oh, that's interesting. What is the impetus of that? If you don't mind sharing, uh, it, it had to do when they were recording their last album with the producer. They had John Shanks, and he showed Ed this this little cap that he puts in his guitars and this value. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's where it came from. Oh, that's he cool. liked he liked it getting sparklier when it rolled down. Ah, interesting. It's like a brake cap on an amp. Essentially, it's the same thing. 
Interesting. All right. So, yeah, but but the guitar definitely has a darker sound to it. So I thought that was. Yeah, what... I don't know why. I don't know why why that is exactly. But does it and, not? Is it is it a maple top on that guitar? What is what's what is that guitar exactly? Yeah, it's a, it's a maple top. It's a okay maple top and uh, I guess basswood body. Hmm. I think I forget I forget what the body's made of. Do, do your tone knobs work on the other guitars you have? The no, I actually. I disconnected the tone knobs on both Did of them. Did you disconnect it on this one? No. Disconnect it. Okay. That, that'll that load down the, the pickup a little bit more and make it a little darker. Make it make it more make it darker than it already is? It will, no, no, no. When you cut it out, it'll make it brighter. Oh, but, okay. Uh, well, yeah. All right, that's cool. Yeah, because I never use it anyway. Right. All right, perfect. Good. Glad that we got that answered. Let's see if there's any other questions while we're. <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe Dave moves the Freeman shop somewhere cool with cheaper housing. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. Not at this point. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Hope they don't use. Someone wrote. Hope they don't use John Shanks again. Huh. Interesting. I thought the al album sounded good. Personally, there, there's there's a there's a lot to that. So, to what? I, I can't I can't go into all the details on that one. But. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, someone wants to know what's the, what's the story with the pedal board with two H nines behind Dave? That's Pete Thorne's pedal board. Oh, cool. Is, is there an ethereal I'm like, on there? which one? <laughs> I don't gonna, even see it. It's right. It's on the floor. Your... There you go. Oh, oh, okay. I see it. Yeah, yeah. Right there. So, wow. No, there's not an that's, ethereal on it. That's, In that's fact, there's no sex. wall pedals on it. Yeah, it's probably not. It's just pure <laughs> sexiness right now. It looks nice. <laughs> uh, we, you you got to get a wall pedal on there. You know, he has them. You know, you know what you should do? You should just, uh, just for fun, like swap something with the metal zone. See if he notices. <laughs> <laughs> just change the housing. Uh, now I mean, like, certainly just, just put a metal zone on his board. So when he, he walks by, he's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Why is there a metal zone on my pedal board? <laughs> That's funny. We were talking that one time that someone uh, took out all the the fuses out of those amps. What was that? Was that George? George from Trop. Uh, well, yeah, it was George that did that to me. Yep, yep, yep. At an amp show, fuses out of your amp. <laughs> yeah, at an at the LA amp show, he took he uh, in my room. He took all the fuses out of the amps and put them in a little cup on the nightstand in there. And so then my employee Travis at the time went in there in the morning, and none of the amps would turn on. And he's like, <laughs> you know, and then he came to me at breakfast and it's like, I don't know what happened. None of the amps will turn on. It's like, they just won't turn on. And, and then I looked and the, the fuses are gone. Who would do such a thing? So George <laughs> Metropolis is sitting at the table next to me and he just starts cracking up. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> he would. I like, I like look over at him and I go, where are the fuses? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I've never, I've never gotten him back, but, uh, but uh, it's coming still. He, he'll, he's going to be at Summer Nam. Yeah. Well, he's not setting up there, but I think he's, he's got a place. Yeah, he's going to have some sort of something there. Yeah, some something going on at a private thing. Yeah, yeah. You might have to get him yeah. back. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um. So, uh, <laughs> so, do you, uh, so, so uh, let me ask you something, Dave. Do yeah. you think that uh, like the amp shows are? I mean, is that kind of a thing of the past? Because it seems like, you know, there used to be like the New York amp show, the Nashville amp show, the LA amp show, like all these different amp shows. But it seems like, it seems like people just aren't flocking to them as much. Does it? Is it feel that way out there on the West Coast as, as much as it does here? Yeah, the the, the ones out here uh, are are um, to to me aren't doing very well. Um, I mean, the only reason we've chosen not to do them anymore, we did them for uh, like a lot of years, a ton of years, and we we're very supportive of it, and we like doing it. 
but I mean, right now, I mean, you know, it's like in October, and then you have Nam, and then uh, you know, and then now we're doing Summer Nam now, and and we do the Sweetwater right. event. It's like there's only so much we can do. If they ever do Nashville again, though, I was interested in doing that one. Nashville's fun. I love I love Nashville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that that event run by Sarge or whatever was supposedly mm -hmm. a great event. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why they stopped that, but that was so much fun. Well, they were doing they, they, it every they, other year for a while. Yeah, and, and like every, like every player in Nashville came through there. You know. So yeah, that's what's you, good you, about you, it, and that's why I'd like yeah. to do it again if they do it again. If they do one again, um, yeah. And the hours were crazy, though, wasn't it? Like from like 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in in the evening, yeah, or something. Yeah. It was crazy. You're just gonna camp out in your room forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, one of the guys that worked for me actually stopped up the toilet in the room. Oh, <laughs> which, oh no. you know when you're uh, you know when you're trying to sell pedals, probably not the <laughs> coolest thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a crappy yeah. atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Literally, uh, <laughs> just, get, just get some spray <laughs> for breeze. <laughs> oh man. Um, let's see. We got a question here. Any thoughts on tube overdrives? I have one. I was say, yeah, Dave, that's that's. Uh, I have two. No, you got. I just saw your fuzz too. Um, yeah, the tube fuzz. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Those are cool pedals. Just, the fuzz fiend, right? Yeah, both both are cool pedals. I mean, I, I thoughts on them. I mean, just another way of doing it with different building blocks. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they 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 look they look pretty cool with the tube in them and everything, and they just mm -hmm. you know. They, yeah, I agree. It's just really different building blocks, you know. It's just you. Is it better or worse? It's it's the same. It's it's just a different flavor. Yeah. Just like any pedal, it's just another flavor, you know. What does the tube actually do for it compared to? Well, it's it's high voltage. I mean, so you're you're going through your. There's a couple gain stages. Well, there's one tube, so there's a two gain stages that you're you're actually going through in in the pedal. Mm -hmm. um, there is some clipping uh, diodes also in the pedal to do some of the drive, but um, I mean you're going through a high voltage, high headroom tube. It's a little different. I mean, how much different? You know, it, it, for you to decide, really. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like I said, it's different building blocks. It's just done a different way. You know. I think they're cool too, man. I, I think I, I think there's a lot of people that don't understand. Uh, and I, don't, you, I don't know if you see this or not, Dave, but I see this a lot. Where a lot of people think that just because it's a 12 AX7 that it's going to be like just like an amp, for example. I don't, I don't think that a lot of people understand that there's so many to, to like get that amp sound that this that sound of amp distortion. It's not just the preamp. Like there's a lot of other mm -hmm. other. You know, I call them Lego blocks. <laughs> There's a lot of other building blocks in the process that uh, that kind of form all that gain and all that sound. So, and just like Dave said, I mean, like tubes feel really cool, and they're totally different than like a transistor or a JFET or an op amp or anything like that. Um, it, it's it, it kind of goes back to uh, condiments, you know, which is better, ketchup or mustard. You know, sometimes I like mayonnaise and sometimes I like ketchup and mustard. I mean, it just depends. So the answer is you need both. You need tube stuff and you need solid state stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's my thought, anyways. Build different building blocks, different tools for, yeah. for your craft, you know. Was there any consideration for Wampa pedals to have be any tube-based pedals? Yeah. I've, I've thought about it over the years, but... You know, it just um, so so at least with distortion, like I always look at what different people are doing in the market, right? And for us, like we're we're a two hundred dollar pedal uh, as far as overdrive and distortion goes. And if I if we start getting into tube things, then it gets more expensive. And our customer base doesn't want that. They just like that's not what they're into. And, and in fact, uh, I mean, when people have asked me about it. Uh, even here recently, I'm like, I know Friedman's coming out with some stuff. You need to shoot him an email and see what he's got going on. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, not I, you know, never say never. But I I can tell you, I haven't breadboarded a, a uh, tube based distortion pedal for a while. 
So not that it won't happen, mm -hmm. but you know, that's cool. Um, so we talked earlier, Brian, about how you got hooked up with Brad. What about Brent Mason? <laughs> okay, so all right, let me stretch for a minute. Okay, so that's a long <laughs> story too. Uh, okay, so that okay, I was telling you about the country band I had to learn all those songs for that I found out that um, you know Brent was the guy behind playing you know crazy stuff like uh, the waitress song from Alan Jackson, which blew me away. And so I was studying just religiously. This guy's always licks, slowing them down, trying to figure out every little nuance. And it, I, I became obsessed. So my wife at the time, you, you'll, you'll notice like a trend here. My, my second wife, <laughs> my second wife, um, I, I had told her, I'm like, you know what I want for my birthday? I just want a guitar lesson with Brent Mason. So um, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure it figure out the exact. Oh, you know what? I got things out of line. I'm sorry. I got things out of line. So first of all, before that happened, I actually had found out that Br Brent was playing at Third and Lindsley in Nashville. Uh, this was kind of a well known club, and so I went down there to meet him. Brought him like a modified pedal, and he liked it, and he went on to use it for a while. So, so then, like, then later, then I uh, said for my birthday, I wanted a lesson with Brent Mason. Uh, she hooked that together, so I got my guitar lesson with Brent Mason back then. So that was cool. Um, but I mean, really, like, just it, just like with you know, like Dave talks to a lot of artists too. I mean, like, a lot of a lot of them seem like really not approachable, but they're really just people. They're just dudes or, or chicks, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you if you just you know, if you just talk talk to them like they're a normal person, they kind of appreciate it, you know. And um, so with Brent, I was a super fan, and <laughs> I actually named my son Brent after Brent Mason. Wow! Before I knew Brent, this is before I knew Brent Mason. Like I was that <laughs> much of a super nerd about Brent that I wow. named my freaking son Brent after Brent Mason. Which is so. And so I told Brent that, and he was like. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> That's a little bordering on stockish, stalker, stalking. So, um, yeah. So, but I mean, you know, I mean, he was lighthearted about it, and and you know, over the years, like he would ask me questions, like, "Hey, here's what I'm looking for," and I'd say, "Well, you might try this pedal or this pedal, or maybe I can modify something you have to make it do more what you want." And um, we just we just slowly, little by little, build a relationship where you know you know what at the end of the day, here's what it comes down to. So this really applies to anyone who's like, whether you're in any business, especially in my business, if your focus is to help the artist in some way without expecting anything in return, you'll get a hell of a lot further than sticking your pedal in front of them or whatever and saying, "Try this, please try this, please try this." All I did is I went out of my way to help not only Brad, but Brent, but everybody else I came across. And I tried to do everything I could to help them without expecting anything in return. And what happened is they appreciated it. And so we started forming friendships, you know? Right. That's so, great. and that's, that, so that's, that's really, I mean, like that's, that's, that's the whole thing. That's great. Yeah. You know? So who who else do you work with? Um, I, I know there's other people that you, you work with as well, Brent. Yeah, Brad. there's a bunch of people. But um, I mean, there's I mean there's not there's different levels, right? So yeah. like for example, um, uh, what's his? Oh shoot, Errol Smith, Joe Perry. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Perry's using some of our stuff, but never talked to him, never emailed him, never met him, never seen him. Nothing. Same you know, it's all e it's all email based. Uh, so, I mean, like, it sounds good in theory, but in reality, like, it's just, you know, he's just a dude, a good guitar player. You know, I've always been a fan of Aerosmith. Oh, yeah. He's just a dude. Um, and so, you know, not that that's bad or, or anything like that, but I, a lot of people get, a lot of people kind of romanticize a lot of this business. And a lot of it's just email based or text, you know, text message or, or you know, you're talking to the guitar tech and he's like, hey, we need this. What do you got? 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's, it's not like with a lot of these guys, like let's say if, if Joe Perry, if Darius Smith came to town, I pretty much guarantee I'm not hanging out on the bus drinking beer with Joe Perry. He doesn't know me, you know? Um, but, you know, now if, if Brad Paisley, like the people that you have regular relationships with, yeah, well, I mean, we'll hang out and talk and just, you know, just chill out. That's but, cool. Um, not every artist is that way. Those are few yeah. and far between. That, that's just the people that you've developed this relationship with and you've actually became friends with. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, a big one for me was like Vince Gill, uh, who was a guy I looked up to a lot and super nice guy. I've talked to him a, a bunch, but, you know, when I go to Nashville, we don't go get coffee or anything, you know? So, but I mean, you know, he, if he needs something, his tech gets a hold of me and I'm like, yeah, I think I got a reverb or something. And, He's like, well, here's my credit card number. You know, so like, I still don't go hang out at those guys' houses, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, it's still fun. It's still cool hearing your song on the, like hearing the song on the radio and thinking, wow, he's using my stuff on that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, you know? that's gotta be killer. I remember the first time that happened whenever I heard, um, uh, I don't even remember what song it was, but I remember that Brent, to Brent is Brent Mason. And he told me that he played as a Toby Keith, Toby Keith record, and he's like, "Yeah, I used uh, your modified blues driver on that." And when it came out, I remember hearing it like, "Holy crap, that's the pedal I made for him that's on the radio." Mm -hmm. You know, and like that was those those moments are cool. Very yeah, cool. It kind of gives you those, uh, you know, goosebumps, right? Yeah. I remember when I first, I, and I've never made it as a musician, but when I, first, when I made a demo tape when I was in college and um, the local radio station played it on the radio. I mm -hmm. actually still, I still have the recording of when it played on the radio and they made the <laughs> announcement, you know, and That's I cool. went nowhere, but I, it's still, they said, you know, they talked about the band and played the song and, you know, I, that That's was like, like, that was like the best thing ever. I see, I never even had that happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was in Gainesville and it was probably three people probably heard it. So, <laughs> um, let's see, we, we're, we're, oh, we're kind of late. Uh, Brian. Yeah. I'll have to run here before too long. I have a, I have a, my child's, well, my child, my 17 year old son, his birthday's today or actually it's two um, days ago, but this is the first day here at my house. So we're celebrating today. So yeah. That, and that's awesome. Happy birthday to him, by the way. And, well, uh, and I know you said you you had a you had about a two hour limit, so we're about ten minutes past already. So. Hey, uh, I, yeah, I have a. There's a question in the chat for me. Actually, I'll answer. <laughs> okay. Lou, Lou, he asked if the Dirty Shirley can take KT sixty six tubes. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Just bias it upright, and you're good to go. Hmm. Um, I don't know how it sounds because I've never actually done that. <laughs> But uh, I, I'm guessing it might sound really cool. So uh, give it a try if you want to. Okay. Um, you know, we got one other question for you, Brian, before you head out. Sure. Sure. Uh, from Lou. Brian, what's the, uh, the Vermeeren versus Timmy drama all about? Ooh. Uh, okay. So that pedal, if I recall right, I think, is it, is it Vermeeren or Vermeer? I, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Yeah. But I think it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's based off the Timmy uh, circuitry, right? Uh, Timmy's made by a guy named Paul Cochran in Nashville. Uh, super nice guy, smaller builder. Works, you know, builds them just him and maybe a couple other people. So it's uh, you know a lower volume. Mm -hmm. And um, the pedal community is really weird. And I'm not sure if the amp community is the same way. I, I bet it is. But like, there's some pedals that. It's you're just kind of forbidden to clone. And like the Timmy is <laughs> the one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, but it's a clone. Uh, is it exactly the same? I really don't know. I, I don't know what it's really. It doesn't it's really sound the not. same to me at all. It's it's really not. It's really not. I mean, you know, and Dave, you know as well as I do. I mean, like I don't know if you've seen the schematic for something like that or not, but it's super I, simple. It's a couple of op amps and. Yeah. It, it's know, super, super simple, simple tone. Yeah. But if it's not the same build, I mean, the architecture, I mean, there's 10,001, you mm -hmm. could say, Tube Screamer 
variants right. uh, on, on the market, literally 10,001 probably. Um, right. Do they radically sound different? A lot of them radically sound different, you know, from each other. Um, I, I think the Jan Ray and the Timmy sound totally different. I love the Timmy. Timmy's a great pedal. Um, I like that better than the Jan Ray actually, but uh, the, I think the Jan Ray is a good pedal too, but it's, to me, they're totally different. So it's off the table for me. I don't, right. I don't, I don't it, care. It's, it sounds totally different. Everyone's going to copy everyone. Everyone's going to base something off everything. There's only so many ways you can do it. Um, right. Especially in pedal overdrive formats. There's only so many ways you can do it. It's really that right. about the, the parts you're choosing um, to put in it and your, 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 your voicing choices. Um, right. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that kind of comes back to people focusing so much on the schematic. Yeah. You know what I mean? That they're like, oh, it's a clone. It sucks. We hit it, you know, or yeah. how dare they, how dare they clone a pedal, you know? It's okay charge to clone three a times clone. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's a weird market. I mean, in a market where, you know, you can't. It's, it's totally cool to um, clone a Telecaster or a Stratocaster all day long. Oh yeah. And it's not cool to 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 clone a, you know, a Devi Ever pedal or whatever. Oh, right, uh, right, 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 right. I mean, you name name a small builder. It's not that. That's not yeah. cool. Um, and it's just I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Like why people feel that adamantly about it. I mean, like, I get it. You know, like I don't like people cloning my stuff, but. You know, what are you gonna do? Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, it's, it's business. You At the end of the day, it's it. business. Yeah, it, it, again, it doesn't mean that they're gonna sell more than you or less than you, or they're gonna take your business away. Um, right. It really doesn't, because chances are they're gonna sell less. Um, I agree. Most people it, are gonna go to the original. You know, it's just they're gonna buy the original um, pedal, and and right. if you're already a well-established builder like yourself. Brian, you know, it's like they're not going to take your lunch. You know, I'm sorry, they're not. Right. It's right. not. It, it's not. They're they're not going to come in. They're not going to beat your pricing. They're not going to. You know, it's just like, and if they do beat the pricing, it's some little Chinese knockoff. But still, no one's right. going to know about it, and they're not going to buy it, and they want to buy the Wampler. So, right. exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, will it take a few sales away? Maybe a few, but not really nothing to write home about. You know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Brian, I, I know you got to run. Um, yeah, man. And, uh, you know, again, happy birthday to your son. Hope uh, you. hope you guys have a great night. Um, congratulations. The shortest show ever. <laughs> yeah, this is – actually, Grover's was the shortest one, but uh, – Was it? No, we were on there for a long time, weren't we, with Grover? No, I, I thought Grover was like an hour and a half, actually. No. I don't no, think so. I think so. I think so. Really? I have to go back and look. Yeah, I think it was like 90 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Yeah, there, every other one after that was three hours. The bonanzas. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Or more. Yeah, exactly. But um, but Brian, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, thanks, Emmy. You know, and it, it, um, congratulations on the ethereal pedal. Also, everybody, go out and grab it. Um, it's super cool. I know it. Probably pay for it first before you grab it. Yes. Yes. Because exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you want to you want to be able to get paid for that. So <laughs> I, right. I like to feed my kids. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's a great pedal. You guys check out Wampler pedals. Uh, check out Brian. Where, where can people reach you? Where can people uh, check out your stuff? If you want to just give us some plugs uh, for your website well, and stuff. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the easiest thing is WamplerPedals.com, of course. That's our website. Uh, we're all over the place. So, you know, if you run Facebook, we have the Wampler Pedals page. We also have the Tone Group on Facebook, which is like, um, I think we're up to like almost eight or 9,000 people now of just people that just love to talk about guitar tone. So imagine kind of like the gear page, but we run it and I make sure like all the buttholes are like kicked out. Mm -hmm. So like there's not a whole lot of trolling. So there's not, there's not like a hundred pages on a thread that's, Right. Talking about nothing. Yeah. Right. We just, we just, yeah. If it if it starts going down that route, we're like, all right, guys, let's let's cut it out and move on. Mm. But uh, so it's just a bunch of guys, like minded guys, that love talking about gear and will trade gear and that sort of thing. Uh, on Instagram, of course, I uh, got a YouTube channel, and I'm on Snapchat. 
So, like, if your kids use Snapchat, they like guitar. That's I cool. Use that every now and then. So, <laughs> <laughs> you have, um, and you have a podcast too, right? And I have a podcast, Chasing Tone Podcast. Yep. So, uh, Dave, just so you know, Brian was telling me about how to set up for us to have a podcast. So, okay. um, so I'm going to br take Brian's advice. I'm going to check out that site, Brian, that you told me about. Um, and then I may reach out to you on to find out how I can rip the audio sure. from the video. Um, yep. so guys check this out. Also tone talk.com tone dash talk.com. We will have a podcast eventually. So I'm going to be working on that to take the ones that we've already done and to convert that to a new podcast. So if you guys want to listen to it while you're driving and stuff like that, and then, um, we'll do that and for I'm, future. Sh and I'm working on the intro. Oh, you are. <laughs> you are. Yeah. 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 So cool. That's coming. Cool. Awesome. Very good. Very good. So, uh, guys, like and subscribe and share. Uh, check out Brian Wampler and Wampler Pedals. Great stuff. And uh, we'll be back in a few weeks. I know we're going to be at NAM, so we'll probably uh, probably go yeah. We'll, we'll have to see when the next show is exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We'll might there go might live. Be one in between. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can, if we can do something in between, that'd be good. Um, maybe we do a Facebook Live or something from NAM or something. Yeah, definitely. Something yeah, like well, that. And we'll, uh, we'll try to get some videos of some product demos and stuff like that, too, mm -hmm. from Nam. So, um, yeah. all right. I, we, we actually have almost 50 people still watching, so I'm kind of – I feel guilty. That's great. For, yeah. Well, you, guys, you guys can keep talking. I can just bow out. Yeah. No, I think that's a good – I think I, I, we're good now. I think, yeah. you know, it's nice to have a show <laughs> that's not, like, three and a half hours long. I agree. I think we're yeah. good. Leave them one more. Leave them one more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like Costanza. We're out. We're done. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Thank you so much, Brian. Again, a pleasure meeting you and having the opportunity to have you on the show. Likewise. And uh, I'll see you in, at Summer Nam. Enjoy your vacation. And uh, Dave, I'll be talking to you soon. Yeah. See you, Brian. Thanks for coming on. See you guys. Right. You guys Thanks just you. hang on one second while I hang up. Okay. Sure. Okay. Everybody have a great night. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. See you guys later.